boxing fans, wherever you're watching this stream from around the world, and a special hello to UK fight fans watching on Box Nation. I'm Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, and with me, as always, the former WBC featherweight champion of the world, Kevin Kelly. And, and Kevin, tonight in our main event, a fighter we're very familiar with, an undefeated junior middleweight prospect from the Ukraine named Sergei Boachuk takes on the toughest test of his professional career. And this man has had a busy career and a fast rise to where he is right now. He turned pro in 2017, February of 2017. He has fought every other month, steadily increasing his opposition until now, tonight, he's gonna face Freddy Hernandez, a former world title challenger at welterweight, a fighter who's been in there with six or seven world champions and has beat a few. And you know what it's like to be in Freddie Hernandez's shoes. I recall late in your career, people looked at you as a faded former champion, thought that they would build up a young prospect on your name. Oh, yeah. And you shocked more than a few guys. Yes, you know, at that stage of the game, they're looking at it as you're older, you're not up and coming. Uh, it's a money game, it's a business. You understand, young guy, you know, you want to motivate the young guy and utilize, utilize the older guy to advance his career. Right, plus you're gonna learn from an old yeah. guy too. You're in the ring with him, scrapping with a guy well, with that much experience, you learn. I didn't forget what I learned. <laughs> right. And the promoters don't understand that. I didn't forget what I learned. Yeah, you might think I'm a little slow in the tooth now. I might not be as hungry or ambitious, but a lot of times they're wrong. That's what I needed. I needed the motivation, a guy that's in position so I can beat him and get the level that he, they're trying to advance him to. And that's what usually happens. Uh, Hernandez is dangerous. Right, He's. Well, we should note, he's 40 years old. But two fights ago, he upset Alfredo Angulo, still serviceable in, in yeah. 2016. He's lost his last two fights, 10-round uh, decisions to Wally Omatoso and Jason Quigley. And you saw, you watched this fight. Yeah, Jason Quigley is a, an undefeated middleweight prospect. He's actually as big as Bohachuk is, and Bohachuk is six foot tall, everybody. Quigley is naturally bigger, and I would say a better athlete. And Hernandez acquitted himself quite well, even yeah. though he lost that 10-round decision. He, you know, he's he's able to maintain, you know, he's durable. He's seen it before. So he knows he knows how to survive it so that he can either get a, try to get a decision or not get knocked out. Because really how you fight and how, how the outcome is lets the promoter know if they should use you again. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Should I use him as a durable challenger? He survives or he gets knocked out, you know, that's not a good fight. Then they get in trouble for that because they say, well, you know what? He's past his prime and all that. So boxing, you got to be a little bit careful sometimes on making a selection. Yeah. Freddie Hernandez at his best was he, at one time a prospect, but at his best, he was what we call a gatekeeper. And if you're the real deal, you get through those gates. If you're not, he'll beat you. And, and like Exposure. I said, some of those world champions yeah. that he, he fought, including Luis Colazzo and Mighty Mike and Chondo and, and Demarcus Chop Chop Corley, he beat those guys. Yeah. So he has that experience with them. And yeah. like I said, he looks good physically, even though he's 40 years old, and he looked good in his last fight. So let's throw it to Cynthia Conte. She's with Tom Loeffler, the president of 360 Promotions. Yeah. Great. Oh. Well, hey, I know we're live. <laughs> we are live. What? what? Live and worldwide. Live and worldwide. I like that. You guys, welcome to Hollywood Fight Nights. It is fight night, guys. We're here at Avalon Theater. This is the seventh installment. Lucky number seven, like I always say. And tonight, we got four great fights. It's Sunday fun day, and tonight, he's back. Sergei Bohachuk is going to be the main event. And you know what? He always tells me it's easy. So this is going to be the toughest test for him. Well, this, this one's not going to be easy. Freddie Hernandez is coming. He's a proven veteran. He's got some great wins over uh, Angulo, amongst other world-class fighters. And... You know, this is a big test for Surrey. It'll see if he can take his, keep his undefeated streak and his knockout streak alive. Well, he did tell me, even Abel said, we're going to find out tonight, is he able to adjust on the fly? What, what is uh, Surrey able to do besides just go for that knockout? And then also, we, Corona's back. Oh, Adrian Corona. Adrian, Adrian Corona. We have Jonathan Banks over here, Triple G's trainer, right in the house. We're gonna, Michael Buffer is gonna be here tonight, so it's gonna be a fun-filled night. And then we got, not only that, we got uh, the Takate girls, the, Tecate girls, Ocean, the Ocean, Honda Ocean Honda girls. Crazy Ray's back. Crazy Ray is here giving out $1,000 gift cards. Yes. 
But you know what? It's all about the fights tonight, guys. It is a fun-filled night. If you guys are still here, I think there's maybe a few tickets available. Fights will be starting shortly, but and you guys, come out. Forget, George Navarro is on the show. Ooh, jo El Fantasma. He's going to come out with his sombrero. And he, I, in his fighter interviews, he did tell me some things he's, you, I'm going to find different in the ring, so we shall see. But it's going to be a good night of and, fights. And probably the fight of the night, Philly Rubalcaba is not back on the show. Oh, yes, Philly. That's, that's People matchup. say he's not from Philly. It's just his middle name. But this one, he wants to show a sensational performance. He has a lot to prove. And he wants to show his fans what he's about tonight. So Tom Loeffler, I forgot to introduce you. People's promoter, my boss. But this is going to be a good fight night. Let's set this night off. Ready to rumble. It's fight night, guys. Back to you guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to the Hollywood Avalon, the legendary and historic place here in Hollywood, California for tonight's Hollywood Fight Night. It's all brought to you by Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions and, of course, Tecate, the official beer of boxing and Ocean Honda. We are set to go with our first bout tonight, six rounds, this in the Super Bantamweight Division. And ready to make his ring walk, fighting out of the blue corner from Compton, California, here is... Daniel Costantino. All right, Kevin, Daniel Costantino. He's 22 years old from Compton, Cali, as our intrepid ring announcer, Joe Martinez, just informed us. He's a bantamweight, and he's coming off a victory. In his last fight, he outpointed Dylan Miranda, and that was in January. So he's got some motivation. He's coming into this fight with some confidence, I would imagine. Well, that's that's definitely, definitely promising for him. Um, he's a durable guy. And as, and as young guys, you get a chance to work on your craft to see what you can do. Um, you know, it's almost like a kid playing with a Christmas, okay? You open a new toy. Um, he got something in the last fight, a, a nice victory. So now we're going to see how he advances with that victory, or was it just a hiccup? And his opponent ready to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He is from Orange, California. Here is Humberto Rubalcaba. All right. I, I like Rubalcaba's walk-in music here. And Rubalcaba, he is from Orange, California, 24 years old. He was an undefeated prospect until this year, Kevin. He was 9-0. and Now he's 9-1 and with six knockouts. He's coming off the first loss of his pro career, and that took place in February. So a guy who's coming off the first loss of his career is facing a journeyman-type, club fighter-type who's coming off of a victory. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how these guys uh, well, this work through their, the yeah, the mental aspect of the game. This fight is predominantly psychological. Um, one guy having a win, who the record's not that good, and one having a good record and having a loss. <laughs> so the question mark here is, how good can Humberto be? Can he come back and set the feet? Because like I gotta tell everybody. Check him out, he's walking into the ring with yeah. the specs on. It's when easy, he's got the yeah. glasses on, he, he looks like a college student. That's funny. Looks it's like easy you're, you're when the average geek you'd find at a comic shop, but he takes Look the glasses him. off. He is a very good fighter, good boxer technician. Yeah, that's, I've never seen that before. Somebody come in here with their glasses on. That's, that's unique. That is different. I see somebody coming in the ring with shades on. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go with our first bout tonight. Six rounds this scheduled in the Super Bantamweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing camouflage trunks trimmed in gold, he weighed in officially 121 and one quarter pounds. This young professional holds a record standing at three victories. Two defeats, two bouts even. One win coming by way of knockout. From Compton, California, here is Daniel Chino Costantino. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trimmed in gold. He weighed in 122 pounds even. In 10 professional bouts, his record nine victories. One defeat, six wins by way of knockout. From Orange, California, here is Humberto Philly. Rubalcaba! And your referee in charge of the action, Angel Mendez. Oh, 
Gentlemen, I gave you the instruction of the president. We're live. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them out and good luck. Oh, here's the tell of the tape. Uh, 24, pretty much same age. Weight, pretty much will have to be the same. Height, exactly the same. Reach, two inches. Yes. Going to yeah, Alberta. Philly. Yeah, slight advantage for Philly. Well, that's an advantage that's uh, very helpful if he uses it. He is the type of fighter to use it. He's, like I said, he's a technical boxer. He's economical. I think he, he views himself as a boxer puncher. When you talk to him about his, his favorite fighters, he'll tell you Floyd Mayweather Jr., Juan Manuel Marquez, Mikey Garcia, those types. So that tells me he appreciates the technicians and uh, the practitioners of the finer points of boxing. He has a very good jab, Humberto. You know, um, I like his jab. It's quick. It's elusive. And he leads everything off the jab. So, you know, this is a good standing point at getting back in the game. And Rubalcalva usually has the height advantage. He's pretty tall, and he's 5'8", 5'9"-ish. But tonight he's in with an opponent who is his height. Yeah, but two inches short of reach. Ain't that crazy? You know, just an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. It, it depends on how the fighters like to fight. Well, I'm watching the footwork of Humberto. And um, one thing about him, he brings his feet together, I noticed a little bit here. And uh, I don't know if that was an issue in his last fight, pretty much. Um, I like his jab, but the footwork, I think, right now, is a little bit off him. Jabs are talking. Yeah, one thing about Rubacalva, he's 24 years old, and he only has 10 professional bouts. He's not the most active fighter. Yeah, but the one thing that he is doing, he can punch. Yep. Wow. Wonderful combinations, Look, and it's over. Wow, oh my goodness. Constantino is complaining. He, he, he thinks it was a, a quick stoppage, but he was not answering back, and those were some beautiful hook-cross combinations from Rubacalva. Well, that gave us, Roberto gave us uh, an answer to the question. I just lost my first fight, but I'm back. I think it, it lit a fire in his belly, Kevin. It motivated him. Absolutely. It definitely motivated him. He came in here motivated. He's, fi he's still fired up. And he's usually a very low-key cat. Very cool, cool customer. Let's see some replays. And we take a look right here. You know, you see the uppercut, that sneaky right uppercut that he was throwing. Over the top, defenseless. Daniel was defenseless. So you see right here the attack. I think it was a good stoppage because Daniel was not returning any fire. He looked victim, like he was a victim right there in the ring. And I would have stopped the fight myself. He was getting hit with clean shots. All it takes is one shot, and your, your life could be over. Yeah, uh, Constantino left himself open when he was going to the body, and Rubacalva made him pay for that. Ray Martinez has the Well, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. One minute, 39 seconds, round number one. Referee Angel Mendez puts a halt to the bout. Your winner by KO from Orange, California, Umberto. Philly Ruakawa! All right, this is, listen, he bounced back from his first loss, and I like this performance better than the last time I saw him. I saw him in October on a, a Hollywood Fight Nights card, and he scored a knockdown in that fight, but I remember thinking, in my notes I put down, he's not active enough. He doesn't let his hands go enough. And in fact, that fight was a, a majority decision. So obviously, one of the judges had that fight even because the other guy was more aggressive and at least just looked busier, even though Rubakova was the better boxer. But I think he's learned from that experience and definitely learned from the first loss of his career because once he saw his opening tonight, he seized it. Well, everything came off the jab. If you look at it, everything came off the jab. His jab was exceptional today, and that's what sets everything up. So young guys out there watching, the jab is the key weapon, and that's what he utilized, and it worked very well for him. And let me tell you something. That, he, he's on his way again. He had a hiccup, but he's on his way. Yeah, he, and he's, he's getting ready to speak to Cynthia Conte. You guys started off the night tonight. You told me you wanted a, you wanted a show against... 
Philly, what happened here? I heard you complain that made me was a quick stoppage. Can you tell me your side? It, it's, it got stopped too fast for me. Uh, I'm a slow starter, I know that about me. Um, but I was barely warming up. Right when he was getting me, I was barely warming up. He got you with a flurry of punches. Did you see any of that coming or were you, what, what happened here? No, nah, it was just fast. It was, it wasn't, it didn't hurt me. I, I, didn't, I was never hurt the whole time, man. Well, he just caught me cold. That's it. Yeah. What do you want to do from here on? From what do you want? What's your next step now? Well, to change my style or uh, start start faster, cause I didn't I didn't get to warm up enough. I wanted to keep going. What did you What did you expect from Philly coming out in the round? Cause I know you wanted to come out of the gate, keep it in the in the middle, and you both did. What happened? Oh, he he just got me cold. Man, that's it. He got me good, man. He's, I give it to him. He's a good fighter, but hopefully we we'll do it again, maybe. You guys, give it up. Give it up for Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck to you. Philly, 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 Rubalcaba. You guys, give it up to the winner. Can you see? Wait, first of all, I saw you walk in. We never see anyone with glasses on. Do you wear contacts when you're fighting? You go, oh, this, I've never, I didn't even know that. So I'm blind, so. <laughs> Once they're off, I'm blind. Tonight, you said you needed to prove to yourself that you belong in here still. You gave us a show, a really quick show. What happened there? It was so quick, he complained. Why do you think he complained? It was a, such a quick stoppage. I mean, look to me, he was hurt, but that's why I continue to try to uh, finish him off, which I did, so he looked hurt to me. You were on point when you said he was a slow starter, and he just said that. You came in out of the gate. What was the game plan from the very beginning? Uh, hit and move. That was actually the game plan, but I mean, I, was, uh, I noticed that I was catching him with a lot of my jabs, and he set up with a nice right, and that's what got him. How proud of, you are, of yourself after you wanted to do that loss that you had? How do you feel right now at this moment? I feel great, real great. I needed this, and uh, this, is, this is special. And this one's for Grandpa. Uh, who just passed away a couple years ago. This is for him. So, felt great. Huh. I'm excited for the next one. What, what do you want now? What do you want to do now? Uh, whatever managers want, we'll get it. We're ready. Well, you started off our Hollywood Fight Nights, our seventh edition, with a bang. Really quick knockout. Congratulations. You guys give it up for Umberto Philly Rubacalba. <laughs> give a message to your fans and all the fans tuning in all around the world. Thank you, everybody, for all the support and people watching on Facebook Live. Thank you. Love you guys. I do this for you. Happy uh, birthday, Alex! <laughs> happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Alex. All right, guys, back to you. All right. He's a likable young man. Yes. Yeah, you could tell he's kind of shy, but there was some genuine emotion during that post-fight interview. Um, and I, I, I like his attitude. I think the most important thing going forward for Rubacalva is to be more active. And he's, yes. in, he's, he's getting into his mid-20s now. If he's going to be a real prospect, particular, particularly in the very deep division of 122 pounds, yes. super bantamweight, junior featherweight, maybe he can make 118 pounds. Still a very deep and talented division. He's going to have to get moving and, and climb that ladder. It's one thing to knock yeah. out a club fighter. It's another thing to, to develop into a real prospect. Well, the way it works is this way. When you're up and coming, it's called farming. And you farm right. these fighters, and you put them on once a month, or one, sometimes twice a month. Um, years ago, many, many years ago, guys built their records up in two or three years. Yes. yes. And what happens Which, by now, the way, is yeah. what, what, what I like about Sergei Boachuk, yes. our, our main eventer tonight, He's kind of a throwback fighter in that he fights six times a year since turning pro, and he, and he aims to, to keep that pace in his yeah. third year as a pro, and that's why he's already fighting the likes of, of Freddie Hernandez. If you think about it like this, uh, I use myself as an example. When I was coming up, my manager would book me two or three fights in one month. I would fight maybe twice. And you knew it, so you right? knew like you were going to be training all month. <laughs> oh, guess what? No, no, you train less. You train less. Well, yeah, right, because the fights keep you in well, shape. <laughs> so, so, so you rather fight and get, accomplish more of that than sit there training in the gym. Imagine training, you get unmotivated. You train in the gym for three months, four months, and, yeah. and then you're sparring these guys, and you're trying to keep the mentality together. 
this is what happens to a lot well, of young you, fighters. You're using sparring to get yourself into fighting shape and to get that. And it, it, you know, I want you already there. You take as much fight. damage in sparring as you do the actual fights. If you're going to take sparring's that type worse. of damage, sparring is worse. I agree sparring's with worse. you. A absolutely. If you're going to do that, I mean, you might. It's better to get paid. Hello. If you're going to hello. Get hey, listen. I, I sent out a tweet earlier. What a great guy you are. So Josh Lopez tweets back at me. Says, "Yep." He can really call fights, talking about you, not me. Thank you. Awesome. From videos I've seen, he seems like a super normal dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm very normal. He is normal. He's a regular guy. I'm a human being. He's a regular guy. And somebody was remembering one of your fights. This is Nick777. He says, Rem said, I remember when he got thumbed against Derek Gaynor. Eye swollen shut. And just as boxing rich, Rich Murata, said it's getting worse for Kelly, he switched to orthodox and turned out the lights. Amazing. Great fight. That was the first fight? That was a great the first fight. Great fight. Um, smoke, me and Smoke are friends to this day from it. Um, I love that. What's crazy is that we have great competitions, but I needed Smoke. I needed Troy Dorsey. I needed a Prince. Those fights, you need a counterpart. A part, you need a dance partner. So without the dance partner, who are you? Absolutely. So thanks to those guys. All right, Cynthia. Oh, Mike joining in. Hi, guys. Yeah, we want you to hey, join hey. in. I'm sorry we don't have you on her. camera. I have an impressive <laughs> car. There she is. Let us squeeze in. Ooh, let's talk you about know what? The you viewers know. would really uh. rather look at you <laughs> than us. Than, than me. And, and as dapper as Kevin is, you're, you've got the glam going on. I know. Thanks for... I can't even see myself. It don't matter. As long there as you guys You're right in the there. corner. There, be on, there gotta be go. more left. More left. I can't. Keep it over, Kevin. <laughs> no, let me help you. No, sorry, seriously. viewers. No, no, they're, they're now not I sorry. See my show. There once we go. Once they see you, there you go. There once we they, go. Yeah, once they see you, they're, they're not sorry. Okay, well, you know what? I wanted to talk about what just happened here because I did their fighter interviews and exactly what he said. He is a slow starter. He, had, he even admitted it, and he said he's a slow starter. And I, I couldn't even ask what happened because it was so quick. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, but... It was, uh, it was actually very emotional because he was very emotional. Rubagalva was telling me what was going on in his mind. He needed this win, and he needed to show quickly why he still belonged here, and that's why. And that's why I was like, wow, you, you manifested what just happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you have to imagine going through his mind coming into this fight. I mean, he lost just in, in February. Mm -hmm. You take a loss, well, and you're supposed to be a prospect. Yeah. It makes you question your whole life. Yeah. It, yeah. it makes you question this sport that you've dedicated everything for yeah. and sacrificed so much for. And it's like, wh what the hell am I doing? You know yeah. what I mean? And so, yeah, you, you, you make a statement like he did tonight. It just reaffirms his own self-belief. Absolutely. And he just said, I asked him, what is he going to do different? What did he learn in that, la in that first defeat? He's like, I just needed to throw more. I just needed Didn't to trust in myself. Yeah. And he did. And he, he did exactly what he told me. He's like, just watch. I didn't know he fought blind. <laughs> See, that's, oh, why I, that's, that's, to you. <laughs> that's why I like him. He, he wears the glasses, and he can't see without those glasses. So, But yeah, he, yeah. he sees something. He hit, he landed accurately, i tell you that. Yes, he, he did. You know, his eyes with the glasses, too bad you can't fight with contacts, right? Right, but that's the, illegal, right? Yeah, it's illegal. You can't fight with contacts to, to get knocked get cut, out. yeah. Um, you know, that's that's a good question, okay? How is he going to do in his career? He has a medical issue here, which he can't see. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty really crazy. And he's successful at what he does. I don't know. I mean, it was quite crazy. I, I, I want to ask him, can you see close? I mean, what can you honestly see yeah. when you're in the ring right now? But He can see close. He was both <laughs> punches that he, he landed saw. Yeah, he needs, to have, hey, he needs to have his glasses on when he's driving. I think when he's in the <laughs> ring, he's close enough to see the guy because he's got a beautiful jab, and he's a very economical and accurate punch. Nearsighted. He was nearsighted. <laughs> no, but it was good. And Constantino just came up short. Yeah. I mean, that's all it was. Well, what can I say? But on to the next. And at least he started off our Hollywood Fight Nights with a bang. He did. It was yeah. quick. But I like it, knockouts. It, yeah. We his do, his we nickname is Philly. The public like knockouts. Philly. Yeah, he's not from Philly down He's not from Philly. He's not a Philly fighter, but no. he's got a little bit of Philly fighter in him. He's got that Philly him. style. There you go. He's Philly, got a little bit of Philly in him. The Philly style. I was wondering why he called South Philly, you know. Like, his nickname, I um, no, his middle name is Philly Moore or something? Philly Moore? Yeah. It's Philly. It's okay. Philly, not PH. It's yeah, Philly it's with an F. Philly with an F. But if he ever fights in Philadelphia, they're I think, think the crowd will like that, right? <laughs> Philly, right? yo, man, he's one of yeah. us. They're right. going to think, oh, man, he's the guy. Philly, Philly, Philly. Philly, Philly, Philly. Whenever you watch this, do you ever feel like uh, you want to get back in the ring? No. Nah. Nah. You just like um, to stay behind? Me, me, with me, understand. I've had my run. When we retire, Marlon Stalin told me a great piece of advice. I asked him, I said, how do you know when it's over? When I was still boxing. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't see your career ever stopping. Yeah. 
So I'm like, well, how do you know? He said, one day you'll wake up, Kevin, and you won't want to do this. And I said, that's imp- I knew at the time I was on my second comeback. I was like, you crazy. That sounds crazy. He goes, you'll wake up one day, and you're not going to want to do this. And he was right. I woke up one day, and I'll never forget it. I woke up in the morning, and I, and I, would, I didn't mind training, but I didn't want to fight. I didn't mind training. I love training. I love it, but I just didn't want to go fight. I didn't want to stick with a crowd watching me and all that. All the extra stuff and the press conferences. I was like, I'm done with all that. You done it? Well, you done it for decades. Yeah, yeah. with me, I had a great career. I turned pro in, I turned pro in '88. Uh-huh. I retired 2009. Ooh, not and, too long. And ago. I was beating guys late. He tell you late in my career. So, very good. I know. Let's just take our mic. But no, let's talk about Prince Nassim. Okay, I watched it. Let go. Let's go back and talk about this fight. Let's go Everybody back. Everybody talks about that fight. Every, you know what? Right? But it was Everybody. phenomenal. Still. What to happened day? to this day? <laughs> Everybody wants to rematch. Okay. Everyone wants to know. I got to give it to my trainer, Phil Borgia. The plan, I didn't follow the plan. This is very important when you're a fighter to follow what your corner says. The first time I deviated, I let my emotions control instead of my mind control. Phil told me the knockout would came in round seven. But the thing with me was I wanted it in round four. So the reason, and the true boxing statement, how you get stopped to try to stop somebody. Mm-hmm. Because you're more vulnerable. Right. And I left Prince with no option but to throw the left hand when he was on the ropes. I was betting money he wasn't going to throw the left hand. But he did. And when he caught me with this shot, even though I got up, and I think I got up enough time, and Benji Estevez should let the fight go on, mm. um, you know, the rematch is where it's at. So I love the drama because the <laughs> drama was great what I needed in my career. Now, when I fought Prince, I was 47 and 1. Mm-hmm. So and I'm now 47 and 2. Now, the rematch will be a great fight. And we were offered the rematch, but Prince said, I'll never fight you again. Wow. I'll fight anybody really? but you. Wow. Because you know, I'm his equal. I'm lefty, I switch. Uh, I'm a puncher. I got speed. So everything was a match with me and him. You know, I enjoyed what he was doing. We enjoyed our, I enjoyed the fight. Yeah. I wanted to do it again. You but, guys and you guys are, are, are both showmen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of showmen, Joe Martinez. Oh. That dapper gentleman right there <laughs> is a showman. <laughs> And he's ready to announce our second bout of the evening. Let's get it. Yes. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Next bout tonight, six rounds. This in the super featherweight division. And ready to make his entrance. Finally get out of the blue corner. From San Diego, here is Kenton Miller. All right. This is Canton Miller. He's from Jacksonville, Florida, and he was born in St. Louis, Missouri, so I might have to root for him just a little bit. <laughs> I liked how he looked at the weigh-ins. Looked like, uh, well, definitely he's the more mature fighter. He's 27 years old. Adrian Corona is still a teenager at 19. And he's feeling it. I like the, I like the energy and the enthusiasm from Mr. Miller. And he has a very unique nickname. You know, you heard Money of, Hungry. You heard, of, you, heard of, you heard of Floyd Mayweather, right? Money Mayweather? Yeah. He Money Hungry. Hey, well, you know what? Boxing is money motivated. Yeah. Could be. Could be. And his opponent tonight, fighting out of the red corner, Rialto, California zone, Adrian Corona. Okay, Adrian Corona, and his father is one of the more notable referees in all of boxing, Ray Corona. Like I said, he's 19 years old, 4-0, no knockouts yet. So it lets you know he's still growing into his man strength, still, still, still maturing. From Rialto, California, and this is in the junior lightweight division. Yeah, well, I tell you, you know, he's come from a family of being in the game. That's helpful to him. You know, he's been around it. He's exposed to it. So the question mark is how much did he learn? You know, from a referee standpoint, that's a different standpoint. But how much boxing does he really know? 
That's a good question. Well, the education continues tonight. Ray Martinez. From here at the Hollywood Avalon 360 Promotions brings you six rounds in the Super Featherweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold and black, he weighed in officially 130 pounds. His professional record, three victories, two defeats, one draw with one win by way of knockout from San Diego, California. Here is Kenton Money Hungry Miller! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing silver, trimmed in white, he weighed in 129 and one half pounds. In four bouts as a professional, he is perfect with four victories and no defeats. Fighting out of and representing Rialto, California, here is the undefeated Adrian Corona. And your referee in charge of the action once again, Angel Mendez. Gentlemen, I gave you the instructions of the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck. Well, I'll tell you, here's the tell of the tape. Uh, in age, uh, he's very young and weight's pretty much the same. Height. Miller is a little bit taller and he has a reach advantage. Let's see how well the school Miller utilizes that. And normally, Kevin, if you're the younger man, you're supposed to have the advantage. But sometimes you can be so young and your opponent is not old. He's older than you, but he's not old. Exactly. At age 27, Miller's not old. I mean, he's not in old. his athletic prime still. And he's got a reach advantage. And he's trying to catch him with that jab. He's trying to actually hit Adrian with that jab. So the question mark is, you know, sometimes losses are edu edu education. They educate you. And you become a better fighter because you lost a fight than winning all the time. So that's a very, very school fighter he's fighting right now. Right, Canton Miller's record, he has three victories, two losses, and one draw. He's won one of his victories by knockout. And he's traveled to the West Coast before. He's fought in Vegas. He's fought in California before. So he's well-traveled. This is nothing new to him. Yeah, he's uh, real slick. Yeah, yeah, I like his style. He's got a, a sort of a slick athletic style. Yeah, he's got his jab down, you know, a little bit. But uh, he's making Adrian adjust right now, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, right now, and it's also a southpaw. Well, he so, just he just switched. Yeah. So, so he's, he's giving the young man, he's giving the teenager some looks. He's giving, yeah, he in line, he's giving some looks. But as you said, the ed this is part of the education. The education continues for Corona. And uh, most of his education as a professional has taken place in this theater. It's taking place right here at the Avalon. Three of his four pro bouts have been Hollywood fight night shows. So he's ours. <laughs> this, yeah, is, well, this is our guy right here. We're developing. We're watching him grow up. Well, right now today, he's got to make some, a lot of adjusting. He's in the ring with a school fighter. You know, um, Miller is switching right, he's switching lefty. He's very crafty. He's very slick. And uh, fighters like this make it hard for a guy like Adrian to learn from. Yeah, Adrian's starting to time him now. He's getting his jab off. Miller's jab is to the head. Adrian's jabbing to the chest, kind of smart. And Adrian's looking to punch between the shots from Miller. But do Miller. you know why he punched to the chest? An explanation? You know why? Because he has the shorter shorter arms. No, nope. punch to the chest because the chest don't move. Oh, See, that, you can move, you can move <laughs> your head. The chest a bigger product. You can move your chest, but it's harder to not get hit. It's a bigger object, number one. And number two, the head is a smaller object, and it can, it's harder to hit. So let that get an idea, huh? Go to the chest. Aim for the chest. Because you hit something. better hit something than hit nothing. Miller's missing more in the second half of this round. Still a pretty good round. It's just, this, might, this first round might be for Miller. Yeah, I would definitely give it to Miller this round. Just a little more active. Started faster. Nice double tight. jab. Don't just dream it, drive it. During the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. Going on now at Ocean Honda. Drive home a brand new Honda Accord for only $179 per month. So hurry in and save big. During the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event at Ocean Honda. We are back. 
round two of a scheduled four-rounder between Adrian Corona and Canton Miller. And this is in the super featherweight or junior lightweight division. And Kevin, I thought we saw some good stuff from both fighters. We saw some speed and lateral movement and athleticism from Miller. A nice snappy jab. We saw some adjustments made by Adrian Corona. Yeah. Working his jab, he was punching to the chest. And you're right, the, the chest don't move. <laughs> so he was able to land that jab, time some body shots, land a few counter punches. You know, I, I, I'm liking Miller right now. Uh, he's looks, looking real good. Um, but Adrian is definitely playing catch up right now. And he, it looks to me that he's making some adjustments. We're gonna see what the corners told him on how to adjust for this fight. This, this is what boxing is about, about adjusting. And we're gonna see how well Adrian can adjust to Miller. It might behoove Adrian Corona to make this a more physical fight, get in close and try to stay inside. I'm looking at their bodies. At the weigh-in, Miller looked a lot bigger than Corona. And now in fight night, it looks like Corona has rehydrated more. His back is filled out. His arms look thicker. Yeah, he might have he, filled out a little bit, but I still think Miller's a little bit bigger. He has a height advantage on him. Um, the muscular def definition that his body has. Yeah, definitely in, in, in terms of their bone structure. Yeah. Uh, you know, Miller is, he is the bigger guy. And Miller had a good round, so that was a confidence builder. And Miller is sticking to the southpaw stance for now. Adrian is not doing, he's not throwing punches. He's got to throw punches in combination. He's not throwing four, five, and six. He's doing one, seeing how it does, and then he's going back to waiting. Like right here, if they go one, back to waiting. He needs to double and triple that jab and throw punches behind the jab. Yeah, I think Miller is showing him some things that either he wasn't ex expecting or hasn't experienced before. And I don't think we've seen Corona in with a lot of mobile fighters or fighters who are faster than he is. Yeah, Miller didn't come to lay down here. He didn't come to lose, he didn't come to lay down. So Miller right now is, is making Adrian hurt. Some nice exchanges. Yeah, Corona right now going backwards. We don't know what the judges are looking at. But by him going backwards, it's very different. Miller is getting more confident as this round progresses, as this fight progresses. And he's, he's getting a little more aggressive. Landing, obviously because he's landing power shots like that, that right uppercut. But that might help Corona out in terms of counter punching. Well, he's definitely using his height to his advantage, which he should be doing. Miller, that's what he's doing. And he's keeping Corona on the outside. And Corona needs to be on the inside. I agree. <laughs> nice job of evading shots from Corona, but you can't just make him miss. You got to make him pay. You exactly. got to land punches to win rounds. Like I said, he's not punching in combination. It seems like Corona is trying to land one shot to the two and three. And I'll tell you, this round I'm giving it to Miller already because he's more action-packed. He's more active, he's in ring generalship, he's in control. And um, Corona's not making Miller adjust at all. I agree with you, Kevin. A nice jab to the body from Miller. All right, so on our very unofficial scorecard, you scored the first round for Miller as well? Yes, I gave Miller. I think Miller, it's okay. called ring now, Listen, I thought the first round was close, but I, I thought I, the edge went to Miller. I, I thought, get, I thought yeah. he controlled the first two minutes of the round, and I thought Corona came on in the final minute. Yeah, because right now, the way it looks to me is that Miller is the control of this fight. It's that's called, that's it, how I see it. It's called ring generalship. It, and listen, like I said, I said Corona's ours. He's the house fighter, right? Yeah. But we, we keep it real. We're gonna call it the All way we three see it. of us, we're going to call it the way we see it, people. No home cooking here. Yeah. Now, we can't speak for the official judges, but we're, yeah. I'm just saying, that as far as the commentators are concerned, no home cooking over here. Yeah, definitely. Because I, right now, I see Miller in control. Um, we got, you know, Corona's got to step on the gas. We're, we're coming into he round has three. To step on the gas. In a four round fight, if you're down two rounds, you got to make something happen. Oh, it's a six-round fight. Okay. This is a six-round fight. Okay. 
Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good for Corona. I was about to say, I'm used to him fighting in four round fights. Ooh, and nice right cross landed by Corona. Yeah, the Corona, Corona's problem is that right now he's too flat footed. He needs to get on the balls of those feet. See, he needs to get on the balls of his feet, Corona. And yeah. when the Corona's on the balls of his feet, he's more effective. But if he started off flat footed, flat, yeah. and being he's so flat, he's right there for Miller to hit. The trouble that Miller has been giving Corona the very the first three rounds is exactly what Corona said. His speed and his jab. Miller is just quicker and he this is his toughest test yet. Well he needs a victory here and um, you know this upset, if it is an upset, you know, we don't know if it is or not, but the thing is, Miller this will do a lot for Miller's career. He's got some ability there. He does. And Corona's gotta make some adjustments. And he's, he's, he's got some showman in him. He's kind of like uh, you and Prince Nassim Hamed. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a boxer, but he's a flashy boxer. Look at his gold shorts. Check that out. Yeah, and even uh, he's got some tassels on yeah. those black, those black uh, shoes of his. Hands down. Gold tassels, yeah. You I can like see how confident he is. Look at his hands. No! Are down. He's catching Corona with a wide right hand on the outside of the head. Hit him behind the ear um, through the balance off of Corona. So he's doing some nice things here. And it's like, you know, he... You know, they say taking it to school. He's not necessarily taking him to school, Corona, but he's showing him some stuff. I thought Corona started this round well by being aggressive and letting his hands go. And I, I think from this point onward, I think he needs to apply pressure. Steady pressure. He can still work that jab, but he, he needs to be the fighter coming forward. He needs to make a dog fight. So what he needs to do, Corona, is go inside and rough up. Okay, walk Miller. Nice. You see that right? But Miller, like I said, Miller's having some great time. Oh, beautiful. Huge right huge. uppercut landed by Corona. He needs more of that. That's what he's missing. Oh, oh, big right hand. Big right hand. Corona needed that because he was losing this round. Now he's working the body as Miller's back is against the ropes. Now the question mark, was that enough to win a round? You know, what the judges are looking at. So it's, we don't know. It's, it's one punch. It's close. It's, it, it, he's landed more than one big, big yeah. shot. And it, they, these were effective blows because it changed what Miller was doing. Yeah, it took away the momentum from Miller. Miller stopped punching, went on the defensive. Turn, the return of Triple G. The return of Big Drama Show. Yeah, Gennady yes. Golovkin returns to Madison Square Garden June 8th to face Steve Rolls. You visited him in camp. I did. What, just, uh, was that just last week? Yeah. A couple days ago. Yeah, it was uh. at Sugar Shane Mosley's camp. It was interesting, it was Tom fun. Tom Waffler told me that was supposed to be a secret. I said that on the Periscope this morning. <laughs> he gave me the stink eye, like what, no. No, it's uh. literally up the street from his other camp, which the is quite interesting. But uh, he's focused, he's ready, and I, I did get to see a little bit different of Gennady, so we shall, we shall see how he performs in the ring on June 8th. But right now, Corona has been doing things that she, he should have done in the last fight. He needed to land those uppercuts, and he landed that monster uppercut in the last, um, in the last round. Yeah, there was a big that right uppercut, and there were two or three right crosses that connected that changed the complexion of that round. I scored round three for Corona. It, I, I did admit, too. It was a close round. It could be a swing round because Miller was the more active fighter. Yeah, you know. We, it, don't, we don't do CompuBox here, but I, my guess is Miller landed at. more punches in that round. Like, I could see if somebody gave it to Miller, and I could also see if somebody gave it to Corona. So the thing is, with me, I gave it to Corona. So I got it scored unofficially, of course, 28 to 29. I still got Corona losing by a point, so he needs to start rallying to get back into this fight. He needs to win this round, and then go into the fifth round and see what happens in the fifth round, and start taking dominance. So if he doesn't, this could be very questionable. 
Yeah, it seems like he's kind of hanging out on the outside, laying back and trying to set traps. And I think Miller's, that's the wrong style for that tactic. Well, it seems to me that Corona doesn't like fighting a mover. He's very elusive. He even said he's very slippery. He's very elusive. So he's going to have some trouble with that. And you can tell when he starts going to southpaw, he sits in the, on the inside, like you said. Yep. He's not supposed to. No, so he's in the line where he's getting hit. What should happen here, let me tell you, on both sides. On Miller, he's having great movement. He's doing everything right. With Corona, he's not cutting a ring off. Yes. Corona's not using his back leg to step over to the right when, when Miller fights southpaw. So being he's not cutting a ring off, right, Miller has all that movement. All exactly. that mobility. And, right. and that's when the judge's eyes. The judge is going, wow, this guy's in control. Yeah, Corona needs to, to stalk forward. He needs to apply pressure, smart pressure. But he can't follow him around. Yep. He's got to cut the ring off. See, this is what cutting the ring off is. You see how here, see Corona, he's fighting with his jab. He's got to cut off and step to his left, right? He needs oh, he's, a lateral move over. And not throw one punch at a time. Everything comes off the jab. He's having a hard time adjusting to the stances of Miller because Miller keeps switching those stances, though. Miller keeps for the first, Yeah, for the first minute of this round, Miller was, was boxing orthodox. I, I like Miller at Southpaw. I think he really, really neutralizes Corona. And he's doing a good job, you know, switching like he's doing. And he used that reach very well. He does. He controls distance well. And he does it with his reach and the lateral movement. And I, I would say he jabs just as well as, as a southpaw as he does an orthodox fighter. Well, he's been jabbing. He's been, he knew how to switch it when he was 16 when he started. Oh, back of the head. Now, that round is very questionable. <laughs> I'm very questionable with that round. I'm ready to go 10-10. I, I, I like them going 10-10. I, I scored it for Miller. You know? I, yeah, I, I thought Miller was the ring general in there. Uh, you are right. I mean, you know, I'm thinking, but I think Corona no, has some no moments. home cooking. No, no home cooking, cooking with he us. He had some moments. People, we keeps it real. Um, yeah, he has some moments. I'm going to go 10 10. You know, <laughs> I got to. I, I won't so, question you. I'm going to keep it where it's at. 39 <laughs> 38, unofficially, of course. Kate Miller right now by one point. Unofficially, of course, but at the end of the day, I think that Corona needs to step on the gas. What I mean by that is go forward, corner him. And land some more punches to bring this fight to almost a draw. Yeah, at least yeah, at least a draw. Yeah. His father said uh, Ray Corona told told Adrian before he got in here. I'm like, what's your best advice? He's like, handle your business. And That's I was like, stuff. yeah, there you go. And I, I know Ray is, is nervous when he watches his son fight. Of and course. I know he, and I know he was nervous about this particular matchup because he knows boxing, and he know he knew that Miller had a very difficult style for his son, but. I'll say this, Corona has a great boxing mind in his corner, Ben Lara. I call him the Yoda of yeah. Southern California boxing. So I'm sure I'm sure yeah. Ben Lara was giving Corona some good advice between rounds. Yeah, I think this might be the best showing personally up to this date of Miller. <laughs> you know, he's looking really sharp. He looks real effective in there. I mean, that jab he's got is amazing. You know, and Corona's just watching. And how you deviate that is that what happens is Corona needs to learn how to take away the jab. Okay, parry, block, and shoot. Oh, he just got caught with that right. Yeah, yeah he's, he's timing that right. He's landing it occasionally. He's not landing it enough. enough. So, I mean, I, I think there needs to be a change of tactics. I mean, uh, keep, keep firing the right, but come forward. Well, what Corona's got to do is parry that jab. I mean, parry means he's got to catch the catch jab it, when he throws right. it and come over the top of that jab with his own jab. And when you, when you parry a jab, is it best if you can catch it in mid-fire, in, in, in other words, don't just have the glove by your face and catch it there, but try to catch it before it reaches there's your head. No, and there's then no rule to parry. There's no way, way you catch it. As long as you catch it and shoot, it's fine. Oh, okay, they're trading a little bit. Because the whole thing is, you know, whenever you can catch it, as long as you catch it, <laughs> all right? This is a good fight, everybody, and this is, uh, this is actually a, a pretty decent round so far for, for Corona. I think he's this finding is the best range. Round. Yeah, yeah, he's having, he's having, and oh, there's oh. the right. Yeah. Caught flush on the face. That was a real flush shot. Corona stays cool and poised, which is a good thing. You want to see that from a from a 19 year old, but also if you're behind on the scorecards when you land a shot like that, you also want to see see more follow up. Yeah, you it want seems to see he's some, flat. Like I said, yeah, you want to see look at some, his some aggression. Look at his feet. He's very flat on his feet. He's not in a bouncing mode. Needs to be on the balls of his feet. He's very flat. 
Now, it could overtrain. That could be one thing. Um, who knows? Um, maybe he ate something wrong, but his feet are very flat to the canvas right now. You're talking about Corona? Corona. I, it, I, I'm telling you, I'm just looking at his body. It looks like he put on a considerable amount of weight from the weigh-in. He looks, something he definitely looks bigger. Happened. He looks thicker. Now, I don't know if that's slowing him down or if that's messing him out. I mean, he just might be a flat-footed boxer. I mean, some guys are flat-footed. Yeah, they can be flat-footed, but also you look, when you're flat-footed, you still have a little bit of bounce for you. A little bit. Not so much. You're not, you're not seeing enough bounce in the, exactly. the feet of Corona. Okay. Not at all. I mean, he's going on his heels. You know, he's, he's, he's predictable when he comes in. The one thing that Adrian was very worried about in this fight was him fighting Miller's fight, and that's exactly what he's doing. Miller is pulling him in. Oh. Don't just dream it, drive it during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event going on now at Ocean Honda. Right now, our deals are so good, you may think you were dreaming. Like a brand new Honda Accord for only $179 per month or a brand new Civic for just $125 per month. And when you upgrade at Ocean Honda, we'll give you 125% of the book value for your trade. So hurry in and save big during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event at Ocean Honda. All right, it's go time, everybody. One more round. We're going into the sixth and final round. Kevin, I've got Miller ahead three rounds to two. I got Who it. knows how the official judges have. It could be up for grabs. I think yeah. both guys need to come out here and empty the tank. I got it 47-49 unofficially, of course. I got Miller winning by two points. Um, he looks, the ring generalship is his to me personally. Um, the jab is working very well, his movement. He's making Corona miss and making him pay. If you watch, that's a big act here that he's doing. He's making a miss, and Corona throws a shot, and then he's making him pay. And, that, and that's what I'm basing this fight on. The corner of Miller is saying, let's show him your speed and put punches together. So they're winning combinations. They give him the right advice, I'll tell you that. And, and, and if, you know, if Corona's hearing it, He's got to let him throw and counter. That's what he's not doing. Let him throw and counter. You catch, you shoot. Catch and shoot. Okay, boxing is a chess game. Miller's trainer said that he's very Roy Jones-esque and also the special attributes of Terrence Crawford. Why he's a switch hitter. He's ah. His father was a professional kickboxer, and he taught him, and he just learned to box more. But he was able to adjust as a southpaw easily. Well, I actually fight, so I know what he's talking about. I fight both sides, I righty know. and lefty. Um, it's beneficial to do that because you confuse your opponent. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what's happening right now. Corona's completely confused. Yeah, so Corona right now is watching instead of working. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying, Doug? He's yeah. watching instead of working. He sees, you know, he sees everything because he's, he's good at it. With, with his head and upper body movement. He's good at evading punches. As you can see, he's pretty good at picking shots off with his gloves. He just doesn't he doesn't counter when he catches. He yeah. doesn't let his hands go enough. Yeah, see the whole and, thing and, with him. And, and, and the Jack. style, the style and the movement of Miller has effectively uh, neutralized the jab of Corona. Because Corona normally jabs a lot more than this. Yeah. Well the th big thing is he needs a jab. How are he gonna find Miller is throwing a jab. By throwing no jab, you can't find Miller. That's the point. That's what he needs. Okay, and he's not cutting the ring off with his legs at right. all. So those are two mistakes that are young right now, but he needs to learn them, how to cut the ring off on a mover like this. That's a big lesson that, you know, I would ask him. I would say, well, what, did you know how to cut the ring off? Yeah, and you know what, Kevin? In the gym, they need to have him spar with guys who move around. Exactly. More. Guys who are fast, guys who are rangy. He needs to get used to that. Yeah, that's the weakness, I think, on Corona right now. He doesn't know how to hit a mover. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there you go, baby. Yeah, good defense from, from Corona, just not enough offense. Yeah, he's right there, though. The problem is, if you're a judge and you're looking at this fight, you're saying who's in charge, who's in control. To me, it looks just like Miller's just running the show. I agree with you, but some judges aren't looking for who's in charge. They're looking for who's aggressive. Yep. They're looking for who's coming do, forward. Yeah. They're looking at who's, who's throwing punches. harder. Right. Yeah, but it's not effective aggression. I agree. Which is why I scored round six for Miller. So yeah. I got Miller winning this fight four rounds to two, y'all. Me too. I do too. We'll see what happens, though.
And regardless of what happens, good, good show. I mean, this was a good fight. Good tip for tap fight. Good showing from Miller. Win, lose, or draw, I'd like to see Miller again. I think he's the, the right kind of opponent for junior, junior lightweights. Lightweights. If he can make featherweight, I'd like to see him test uh, featherweight up and comers. That'd be a good thing. That'd be a, a really, really good thing. You know, um, Miller, Miller is, looked very impressive tonight. I mean, um, the movement, the, the agility that he has, has. I mean, he's a kid that actually I've seen that I liked. That's a good I, way to put it, agility. He's you know, agile. Yeah, he's yeah. very agile. Quick reflexes. Um, you know, he could go somewhere if they hone his skills. Yeah, he has talent. There's, there's, there's athletic talent there, and there's boxing talent, and those two things on, yeah. aren't always the same things. Oh, they're happy in his corner. They feel good. <laughs> they feel good. I mean, if we were the judges. Maybe uh, they were listening to our commentary, though. <laughs> yeah, could well, be. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and again, win, lose, or draw, it, it, it's, it's okay for Corona. Uh, if, if Corona takes an L tonight, it's, it's just a learning experience. Yeah, that's the L sport. See that? Learning experience. I like that. Uh, I'm learning takes from you. L. Learning experience, I go. like that. That's a good one. You know, and that's why I see, you know, Corona, you know, if he takes the L tonight, um, I don't see it going all the way but to Miller, but like this, I've seen miracles happen before. <laughs> yeah. You know, me and, me and Doug keep it real, you know what I'm saying? So that's where we see it. But a lot of respect to both these young men because it, it was an entertaining contest. Nice, nice combination of, of styles. Total. Judge Raul Caiz Jr. scores at 58-56 for Miller. Judge Jerry Cantu, 58-56 for Corona. And Judge Wayne Hedgepeth scores this bout 58-56. Your winner by split decision. And still undefeated, Adrian Corona. Well, like I said, there's many ways to look at this fight. <laughs> uh, we keep it real. We keep uh, it real. I, I one of the judges kept it real. That was Raul Caiz Sr. He's a he's a veteran. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, it it, it, it was close. I, like I said, there were. I scored the first round from Miller. Maybe that could have gone to Corona. It might have been another close round in there that I scored to Miller that that could have gone to, to Corona. But like I said, some judges aren't always looking for who's in command, who's the ring general, but who's the aggressor. Yes. I mean, that's the way it goes sometimes. You just. You don't look happy. Obviously, you're not happy with the decision. Talk about how you're feeling right now. Uh, first, I want to thank God for putting me in the position to be here tonight and let me walk out the ring with my health. Uh, I work hard. So when I feel that I perform and I didn't get the decision, I'm a, I, tell you, I take it personal. But uh, good fight. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank uh, 360 for bringing me out. I appreciate everything, and y'all ain't seen the last of me, man. That's all I got to say. Tonight, I didn't get to speak to you. I did speak to your team, and you were very, very elusive in the ring. You are a switch hitter. You, we saw you giving Adrian Corona a difficult time. He was your tough. Oh, he was. You were his toughest test tonight. How do you think you performed? Like I said, I think I performed great. I think I did enough to get a win. Uh, I hear people say I want to fight. I appreciate everybody, and I love all you guys. But uh, I can't argue with a, a judge. That's not my job. My job is to come in and perform. I feel like I did that. And um, as long as the crowd and everybody that came out for me to perform for them think that I did a great job, I'm happy with that. Of course, I wanted the decision because I feel like I deserved it. But uh, I, I'm, that's not my job to judge fights. My job is to fight, and I feel like I did that. Well, we can't wait to see you in the ring again, Canton Miller. Money hungry. <laughs> you guys give it up to Canton Miller. He gave a great performance tonight. Shout out to my team. Shout out to my sister, Raquel Miller, the new. Just won that strap last night. 
Uh, shout out to my, my team, my father, my, my coach, my cut man, Al, my Bashur, my wife at home, my kids, everybody. Shout out to everybody that supported me. I believe, I thank y'all for believing in me and I love all y'all, man. Thank you. Thank you so much and best of luck to you in your career. Thank and congratulations, Raquel. Congratulations on a huge win last night. Adrian Corona, come on over. I found your fans back there. Yes. Mr. Corona, congratulations on a win. Let's talk about your performance. You wanted to make a statement tonight. What was your assessment of your performance tonight? I think I fought a great fight. You know, I could have put the pressure on a little more, but overall it was a good fight. We came out with the win. You told me he was very elusive, very slippery, and that was gonna give you a problem. He was switch hitting left and right. You were caught in the in front, in the inside of his foot when you were in, in south when he was in southpaw stands. What happened? We saw it was a little difficult. What could you have done differently? Um, just put the pressure on him. You know, he was switch hitting, but as long as you put the pressure on him, you, you'll catch him. You know. Where, where, was he confusing you when he was doing that? It was a very confusing fight. You know, it was a very technical fight. He fought a very great fight. We noticed also that you were a little flat-footed and, and you weren't cutting the ring enough. Did you realize that? Uh, I did realize that towards the end and I, I try to uh, cut the ring more. What did Ben Lira tell you in your corner every round? Just to keep putting the pressure on, keep putting the pressure on, hitting them in the body, and yeah, keep putting the pressure. All right, well, Adrian Corona, I'll let you go celebrate with your family. I know your dad just got back from Hawaii. Ben Lira, congratulations. And do you have a message for Canton that you, got, you guys put on a great performance? It was a great fight. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a great fight. Thank you to Canton. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank my parents. I'd like to thank my uh, sponsor, the Teamsters. And um, yeah, I'd like to thank my coach, Van Lira. Thank you. You guys give it up for Adrian Corona. All right, so I'm gonna bring in two gentlemen that, oh, they're already here. As you know, to this week, or this, you know, actually the past couple of days, it's been a very hard, two losses in the boxing world, Mr. Harold Letterman from HBO and Burt Cooper, a well-known boxer, and we're gonna have two gentlemen talk. We're gonna have a tribute to them. Mr. Doug Fisher from Ring Magazine, and also, you know, Mr. Flushing Flash himself, Kevin Kelly, world, former world champion. There you go. Thank you. All right, Kevin, uh, now you know who Harold Letterman is because you fought on HBO. You were, yes. You were on championship boxing, and you were even one of the commentators with the KO Nation program where his daughter, yes. Julie Letterman, yes. was one of the, the commentators. But you've had the honor of having Harold Letterman actually score your fights on an HBO yeah. broadcast. amazing. Uh, so for folks who may not be that familiar with Harold Letterman, if you're a hardcore boxing fan, even if you never met him, you feel like you know him because he was that kind of guy. He was an integral part yeah. of the HBO boxing broadcast, and he's actually in the Hall of Fame along with Jim Lampley and Larry Merchant. Yeah. Those guys, they're the best when it comes to broadcasting, but Harold was like a regular guy. Yeah, he was very human. But, but an expert judge as well. So he's given you the insight of a judge but he's also watching the fight the way you or I or any of these fans here in the Avalon would watch a fight because he loved boxing. The tone of his voice, the way he did it like a high-pitched scream, the way he talked, you know, he had this voice that was very nasally, so you knew it was him, <laughs> That's right? True. So you noticed it was him. And you could also hear the excitement yeah. in his voice when the fight was And he was very good. unique, and it was almost like calling the fight himself. So at times when he was, calm, when he was talking about the... The decision he would say, "Oh, there's this my scorecards read like he's the official scorecard," and he would actually go at that beyond level that I liked. And Hal Letterman was very entertaining to watch. He was that that breath of fresh air that boxing needs sometimes. When you have a, like a Howard Cosell, you have a true. voice that you can't forget, and he says unpredictable things. And That's he would true. say that he wasn't scared to, to be a uh, watch what he says. Right, he, he wasn't afraid yeah. to ruffle corporate. Feathers no. either. He, Howard Cosell was that unique guy with the unique voice. Got uh, under people's skin, on people's nerves. Yeah. Harold, everybody loved him. We love Harold. Harold could disagree with, with Jim Lampley, with Max Kellerman, 
He could disagree with the fighters yeah. sometimes. <laughs> he like, was like neutral. Roy Jones Jr., but he called it the way he, he saw, saw it. it. And even if you at home watching on TV disagreed with him, yeah. you still had to love Harold yeah. because Harold loved boxing. And if you had the honor of meeting him, he was the same way. That <laughs> character that you saw on HBO broadcast, that was really him. He was a dude who loved boxing. So yeah. if HBO Boxing was in Los Angeles to do a championship boxing or boxing after dark, yeah. the night before, he was at a club show. Yeah. He'd be in Montebello, or he'd be out here in sure. Hollywood, or he'd be wherever boxing is, downtown Los Angeles, at the club show. Amazing. From the very start of the show, he watched Amazing. all the fights. And Harold was a guy who was born in 1940. Yeah. So he grew up with the great fighters, the golden yeah. age of the 1950s yeah. and the 1960s. As a judge, he got to start in 1967, and he was a judge up until the mid-80s. Yeah, I was born. Exactly. That's, that's old. <laughs> so he actually judged yeah. great fights. Yeah. Muhammad Ali fights, the greatest championship fights, pitting the, the best legends of the sport. He judged them, but he wasn't stuck in the past. Yeah. You, could, you could go to him and talk to the top fighters pound for pound here and today, and you could talk to him yeah. about up-and-comers, prospects. You could talk to him True. about a club fighter and he would speak to you with the same enthusiasm. Yes, and one thing he did, he left behind a legacy because Julie Letterman, which is his daughter, is a judge on some fights, okay? She's a so, world-class judge. And she's world-known, she's world-known. And I worked with Julie, and uh, he left her with great memories of him, and he left her with a great knowledge, a wealth. I mean, he came from an era, he watched boxing entirely from years on and years on and years on. So he's like an encyclopedia of boxing. That's true. So he knew what, what he was watching. And from the perspective that he did, he, and some of those scorecards were always accurate, always accurate. I always agreed with them. I always agreed. I said, I can and see I that. And I liked it. I liked it when the, when the official judges were different. And if, if yeah. Jim Lampley or Max Kellerman or Andre <laughs> Ward or, or, yeah. or even the great Larry Merchant disagreed with, with Harold, he I guess. loved it that, Car that Harold told it as he saw it. And he was the former world-class yeah. judge. He would say to them, I don't know what fight you're watching with that high pitch voice. <laughs> I don't know what fight they're watching, but this car card goes to him. It does not change, and he he was valiant on what he said. And I'll say one one more thing before we, we switch to Mr. Cooper. If you were a member of the boxing media, yes, or if you were a, a, a young up and comer in the boxing industry, yeah. let's say you're a PR guy or you're a site coordinator, you're working for one of these you know promotional companies or you're a manager, or, or whatever, uh, yeah. an aspiring young trainer. Yeah. Harold Letterman was your friend, and you could talk to him, and he loved young people, and he was always encouraging, and he yeah. always gave you confidence in what you did, because That's you true. loved boxing as much as he did, and you see where he is. And Cynthia Conte could tell you, Harold is one of those guys to take you under his wing. It's yeah. very important. There really aren't a lot of people like that. So with the loss of, of Harold Letterman, he passed away at age 79. I really think the entire sport of boxing world, worldwide lost a good friend. Yes. Well, when HBO went down and now the death of uh, Harold Letterman, I think, you know, those two things definitely are, are felt in the sport of boxing. Yeah, it's the end of an era. Now, Burt Cooper, tell me what you know about Burt Cooper. Burt Cooper was trained by Joe Frazier, the Honorable Joe Frazier. Fought like Joe Frazier. They called him Smoking. That's true. Smoking Burt Cooper. Had great fights with Michael Moore, but he put down a Holyfield and these guys. Smoking Burt Cooper was a real trial horse kind of fighter. A uh, Philly fighter, strong, a durable. Um, died, died at a young age here, okay? You know, kind of youthful. Yeah, Cooper, under Frazier, he was a cruiserweight prospect. Probably could have been a world champion yeah. at cruiserweight. Uh, unfortunately, he had personal demons. He battled yeah. addiction outside of the ring. Um, a lot of people he probably lot, had to fight addiction yeah. hard. A lot of people didn't know fighters. that. Yeah. You know, those two don't work hand in hand because if you have an addiction and you're boxing, sometimes you might get away from it. I know people say, how come he was never checked, okay, about this? Uh, they didn't do blood check back then. Right. Right? You do urine. It's a way to mask it. And there's a how these fighters figure it out. So, Burr Cooper, you know, was even under all that demons that he had, he was still an he was incredible still a hell of a fighter. He was a hell he of a was fighter. He still must see TV, and he still got in there and mixed it up with eight heavyweight world champions, yeah. including some all time greats, some guys who were in the International Boxing Hall of Fame, yeah. like George Foreman, yeah. 
Riddick Bowe, of course, Evander Holyfield, yeah. and he came this close to beating Evander Holyfield yeah. on late notice, maybe days notice, stepped in there as a late substitute opponent. Those are fights that people should won. watch. Yes, absolutely. Right now, if y'all want to watch a good heavyweight that came along that was really unidentified, people really didn't know him that much, but he put some great fights on. He's definitely good to watch. Yeah, listen, there isn't a Hall of Fame for gatekeepers. Yeah. But if there was a Hall of Fame for gatekeepers, I think there would be a, a statue honoring Burt Cooper outside yeah. of that museum. And as I said, YouTube is your friend, everybody. Like you said, watch him. Evander Holyfield, his 12-round war with Ray Mercer, his four-round shootout with Michael Moore, oh. and we can go on and on and on. And he won some fights, too. He lost those yeah. fights with those heavyweights. Yeah. But he won some fights, and listen, win, lose, or draw. He's great TV. He's not good TV. He's great all TV. All action. Absolutely. Great TV. So with that said, we're going to bring in Joe Martinez, with the final 10 count. And Joe, actually, maybe you could share some thoughts if you have, and I'm sure you've met Harold Letterman. Do you have any thoughts on, on the great Harold Letterman? Thank you, Doug. And, and I think as anybody who knew Harold Letterman knew a man who was genuine, there was nothing fake about him. He didn't put up any I'm a famous guy attitude. He talked to anybody. And those of us that were honored to know him Genuinely, genuinely, we lost a friend. And those who didn't, I think, in the boxing world, for fans that got to hear him speak, they got to hear his scores, they got hit to hear him say, Jim, we'll always remember and miss that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you will please join us in a moment of silence for both Burt Cooper, smoking Burt Cooper, and of course, Boxing's world-famous judge, unofficial scorekeeper of over 1,000 fights on HBO, Mr. Harold Letterman. We will now toll the count of 10 on the bell. May God keep them and may they rest in peace. Thank you. Almost ready for bout number three. This is George Navarro versus Caesar Sustaita. I hope I'm pronouncing that last name right. We're not familiar with Caesar Sustaita, but we are familiar with Mr. Navarro. He goes by El Fantasma, the Phantom. And this is a bantamweight that uh, you liked his look. He was, uh, I, th I think, he, the last, our last show. Yes. He was featured on it. Tall for the bantamweight division. He's a young man, and actually for this fight, I think he came in under 118 pounds. I think he's trying super flyweight, going for, for junior bantamweight. And if he can make that weight and be healthy, yeah. he could be something because he's a tall, rangy boxer puncher. When you guys see him, you'll see he comes in with a sombrero. He's got, uh, he's got a handsome, handsome mug, good head of hair. He's one of those guys, he looks like one of those throwback fighters, you know, one of those uh, Mexican idols from back hey, in the day. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of uh, Carlos Zarate. Oh, Zarate. Of course, okay. obviously got a long way to go before then. Let's throw it up to Joe Martinez. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Next bout tonight, six rounds. This in the super flyweight division. An international showdown, Mexico takes on the USA, fighting out of the blue corner from Juarez. Here is Cesar Sustaita. Sustaita, I think I did say it right. 
Sustaita. Cesar Sustaita. He's 30 years old from Chihuahua, Mexico. And he's, he's lost his last four bouts, but he's never been stopped. And he has fought in California and in Las Vegas recently, so he's used to traveling, so this is nothing new to him. Cynthia, do you, uh, do you have any uh, additional information I on do. Mr. Sustaita? He is, his nickname is The Spider. And uh, his style is a Juan Manuel Marquez, well, all of them do. He does have an amateur career, 25 and 5, uh, in Chihuahua, Mexico. Um, he's an exciting boxer that can do everything in the ring. So this will be good. He knows the Fantasma. He's taller, but he just says he's a better boxer than he is. Last fighter from Chihuahua, Mexico, that I can recall, notable boxer from Chihuahua, was Daniel Ponce de Leon. He would. This is. He's here. Maybe he is connected to him. Maybe he brought him over here. Yeah. Maybe he's well, the manager. When I was in, when I was talking to Hernandez, I keep staring at Ponce, and I'm like, why does he look familiar? But I'm so busy, and he's like, I'm Ponce de Leon. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. that's like the two line. division. And I was sitting there, right. yeah, two division I kept champion. staring at him. I'm like, yep. I know you. I know you. Wow. <laughs> One hundred and twenty-two pounds, and yeah. also at featherweight. Yeah. yeah. Amazing fight of And his but, opponent oh. is ready to make his ring walk to the red corner from Apple Valley, California. Here is the unbeaten George Navarro. <laughs> All right, here comes Navarro. Like I said, he wears the poncho. Yep. He wears the festive sombrero. He's got the eyebrows. Check out the eyebrows. They are nice. <laughs> he's got, he's got, he he's, does the eyebrows. He's got a good look. He's uh, obviously when you see him in the ring and just in his trunks, he's got the physique of a tall, rangy boxer puncher. It's hard to believe he weighed in at 115 pounds. Yeah, yeah, he's tall. He's yeah, tall. He's, very yeah, he's tall. five foot eight, maybe a little bit taller, he's taller than, than that. me. And I'm a featherweight. Exactly. I was a featherweight. His record is 5 0 and 1. He's got two knockouts. He's from Apple ba Valley, California. And now he just I has that aura, Angeles. somebody who could be very popular. Joe Martinez, he's got the particulars. And here we go once again, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds in the super flyweight division. Introducing to first, finding out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver, he weighed in officially 114 and one half pounds. He enters the ring tonight for the eighth time as a professional, bringing three knockout victories with him from Juarez, Mexico. He is the spider, Cesar Sustaita. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. He weighed in officially 115 pounds, and in six bouts as a professional, has an unbeaten record standing at five victories. No defeats. One draw with two wins by way of knockout. He is the fighting pride representing Apple Valley, California. Here is El Fantasma, George Navarro. And your referee in charge of the action, Raul Guys Jr. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Legal punches, these are a bit high. Here for you. Legal punches, here for you. Touch gloves, go to both of you. One set of He has to tell the tape, very, very young Navarro, 20 years old. He's got him by 12 years. And uh, weight, pretty much even the same, but that 5'9 height advantage and reach advantage is going to hopefully use it well. Yeah, those are considerable advantages that Navarro has. I didn't know he was 5'9. That is tall for a, a, a super flyweight. He's two inches taller than me, and I'm a, I was a featherweight. <laughs> you were so a to featherweight. give you an example. Yeah, who fought just fine at junior lightweight. You know, and, that, and that's crazy. I mean, for him to be that thin, but that tall. And that he doesn't look frail or anything. He looks looks muscular and athletic. Oh, oh and he's he's an, he's an aggressive fighter. Yeah. He can actually grow into um, a good lightweight at 135 or even a junior welterweight because he's got the height advantage. That's the, that's the advantage of being tall. You know, when you're tall, you, gotta, you can put more on your frame and go up in divisions like Tommy Hearns did. 
Well, he's he's normally fought heavier. He's fought at you know between 118 and 121 pounds. But being 20 years old, you know, you're able to make those weights. You can boil your frame down. Yeah. And he's young and he's strong. Like I said, you know, when you got that height, I'm looking at a guy that could previously become a lightweight champion of the world. Multiple divisions. Multiple divisions. And Navarro's not messing around. He's just, I mean, no jab from him. We're just seeing power shots. That was a nice right cross followed by the left hook. And he's, he's, he's looking for power shots only. Well, expect from Cesar that big ramp, excuse me, big right hand and a looping left hook. That is exactly what he said since Navarro is much taller than him. Oh, it's oh. over too and late. Never mind. That was over. Whoa. That's leverage that he has. It's Whoa. over. Oh, yo. I was going to say, too late. He needed to fill that looping right, right hand and that overhand left. <laughs> by mistake. Well, yeah, maybe about right, listen, 20 my, seconds prior. When I wrote my card down, I wrote by mistake KO, KO. Navarro. Right. Did that just and, happen, or did that, you know that? that I know, I wrote this out. by mistake. Okay. I wrote KO Navarro by mistake. All right, Kevin, you're kind of psychic, man. And I'm, that was I'm, crazy. I'm scared. <laughs> that was crazy. Listen, wow. like I said, okay, this guy has the look of those. Old school Mexican bantamweight idols, guys like Carlos Zarate. Yeah, he looks like a Zarate. He got the, yeah, tall with the hair. Zarate was also five foot nine. Amazing. And he was a knockout machine. I think Zarate was well, like. Here oh, we take yeah, a look. Look at this. If you look, he's got the height advantage, reach advantage, and what he's waiting, he's pausing with that jab, pointing with that, and that straight right hand came right in the middle. Okay, right in the middle of Caesar's punches. As you see right here, take another look at it. Caesar goes to react and gets caught yes. with a straight right hand. You know what? Navarro connected with that right hand just as Ustaita was loading up with his own yeah. right hand. He was trying to throw it, but he was throwing it wide. So yes, when he opened very it up wide. wide, when he opened it up wide, Navarro came straight down the middle. That's the way he's supposed to throw things. So today, when he watches this over and over again, <laughs> he can actually study what he needs to do. And right. in the future, he's got the height advantage, the reach advantage. I mean, he used leverage. I mean, you know, it's amazing. You see the guy with the with the baseball cap next to Navarro? That's Jesus Soto Carras. We were talking about Burt Cooper being a great gatekeeper. There's a great gatekeeper right there. Joe Martinez has the official verdict. Well, comes officially one minute, 37 seconds. Round number one, referee Raul Caiz Jr. steps in. This bout is over, your winner. By way of knockout from Apple Valley, California, El Fantasma, George Navarro. Excellent victory for Navarro. You know, his last three bouts have been on Hollywood Fight Nights cards. So we're building this guy up. And uh, kudos to Tom Loeffler and 360 Promotions. It streams yes. these fights. Not geo-blocked. It's everywhere. People in the UK can watch it now on Box Nation, so they're getting to know these guys at the very beginning stages of their professional career. So he improves to 6-0-1 with his third professional knockout, and he is with Cynthia Conte. Wow, and Fantasma Navarro, oh my God. I was just saying on the live stream, I'm like, Cesar said, look for that big overhand right and a big looping left hook. That is what Cesar said he was gonna do to you. And you got him straight flush in the face with a big right hand and knocked him out. Wow, what a knock. You guys give him, give it up to that. Give, that was. You, this is, you are no stranger to this stage, and let's talk about this fight. You said that he was, this was gonna be difficult for you. Yeah. What happened? You made it look so yeah. simple and easy. I don't know, you know, I don't like to underestimate my opponents, you know, I just, I came here to do what I did, you know? I trained hard, you know, worked my ass off for this fight. You know, I wasn't happy with my last appointment, you know, so I had to make it up, you know, get a KO. Well, you did tell me you needed to be more patient, yeah. be more aggressive. 
and you sure did. I mean, you weren't really more patient because you did it in the first round, yeah. but you did exactly what you came here to do. Was there anything in that short amount of time, did he give you any trouble? And when did you know that you had this in the bag? You know, well, like, <clears throat> I already knew, you know, like, I was noticing that he was open all the time, you know, so I was just trying to hit him with hard shots, you know, and make him drop his hands. And I caught him with the, the loop overhand. You didn't even throw one jab. We noticed that. It was just all aggression, yeah. aggression. And you did it. You threw yeah. combos, and you landed that nice right hand, knocked him out. Did he, did he say anything to you in the ring? Or, wait, do you understand Spanish? Yeah, he's okay. in Espanol, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, he didn't say nothing to me. You know, I was just ready and focused, you know? You know, I was just ready to win, you know, get that KO. Well, you got that KO in a fashionable manner. Yeah. And I know you had a party bus here yeah. that came down with all your family and friends. I think they're all over there. There they are. Downstairs. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a big support, you know, for all my fans that come out support. You know, I want to thank all my family and friends. First of all, I want to thank God, you know, for that opportunity. You know, I want to thank Mike, Tom, you know, for, and 360 Promotion, you know, for having me back here, you know, and show, you know, my, all my fans, you know, and new fans, you know, what I could do. Well, you guys. George, I cannot wait to see you back in the ring for more knockouts. You learned from your last, your last fight, and you did exactly what you said. You know, I'm, I'm just ready, you know, to take over the you know, super flyweight division or the bantam weight, you know? I'm ready, you know. Are you uh, move up? No, I'm just gonna stay super gonna flyweight, stay? either one of those weight classes, you know, I can make, I make weight pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. what, are we, what are you gonna do now? How are you gonna celebrate? Yeah, I'm gonna celebrate, you know. I'm craving, you know, I'm craving, you know, uh, uh, you know, a juicy pizza, you know, Domino's pizza. You know, I haven't ate nothing, <laughs> nothing heavy, you know. <laughs> I'm craving food. <laughs> yeah. Well, go enjoy your win with your family and friends and cannot wait to see you back on this stage. Congratulations. Again, give it up for George Navarro, El Fantasma. Do you want a message? Do you want to say a message to your fans, everyone? First of all, you know, I want to thank all my fans that came out to support, you know, all of you know. Vegas, you know, Apple Valley, you know, LA, South Central, you know, La Puente, you know, all my families that came out to support. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. doing his pictures. We're gonna bring in Tom Loeffler, Alem, oh, oh, you're coming in. Kevin Kelly, you're coming in real fast. You wanna take the mic? Wait, oh, yeah. did you see, what? Not yet? What happened? Oh, no, 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 oh, I know. We were just gonna talk. I we were gonna do with your, your daughter's thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to, we're gonna talk first about uh, Kevin Kelly. As you guys know, the last Hollywood Fight Nights, he did talk about to something, something near and dear to his heart. He has a GoFund page me for his daughter. Kevin, please, I'll let you take over. All right, my daughter Ashley Kelly is 27 years old, married and two children. She has lymphoma, it was former cancer, which is stage two. She's in chemo right now. So last time you guys did great for me, we still, trying to build up her account to fight this lymphoma. So we have an account, a GoFundMe account, help Ashley knock out cancer. So right now, this is what we, where we're at right now, and I'm looking for donations, uh, anything that would be beneficial to her. I got all my friends donating money to, her, to the cause, and right now we're trying to beat this cancer. So this fight is bigger than any fight I've ever done. So this is my daughter. She has two children, very young, she's 27 years of age, so it shows that cancer does not discriminate. You know, she was my healthiest child, she worked out, she exercised, she ate right, and she has a cyst right on her chest right now, so we gotta help her beat this cancer. 
and uh, she's in chemo and she's doing okay, but we need things to help her and push her. You guys, we really need your help. We need, we need to help fight this. We need to knock this out of the park. Please help. Go to the GoFund page. As you see, we're going to be able to put that full screen up. We're going to help your daughter fight cancer, all right? We're going to help him knock that cancer out of the park. Thank you, Thank you Kevin. Well, we're up here with a bunch of, yes, Mr. Tom Loeffler. You guys give a round of applause to the man who's putting this show on. This is the seventh edition of Hollywood Fight Nights, 360 Promotions. Seventh, seventh installment is going quite fast. <laughs> Didn't expect very quick knockouts, but I also see we are missing one person up here. Miss Raquel Miller, I would like, Raquel Miller. Oh, Louisa, oh, bang, bang, please come to, this, uh, to the ring if you guys are still here. We need you to come up because I want to interview you. Okay, well, why, why is everyone back onto the side? Why don't you come over here behind Cheryl? Or, okay, Tom, let's have a conversation here. Is the fight going is the way you expected? There's some knockouts, I have to admit. I was very, very surprised and shocked. How is fight night going for you? Oh, it's, I mean, it's a great energy. They're evenly matched fights, but when you get quick knockouts, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting, but everything is going pretty fast. We have, we have some great fighters in the ring right now that we wanted to introduce. We want to thank everyone for coming out. We want to thank Ocean Honda for being a, a great sponsor tonight. Naturally, Takate, naturally, uh, MGM Resorts. Um, with that, I want to introduce some of the fighters in the ring. We actually have a special treat. We have two amateur fighters here, two amateur national champions. Uh, Nacho Navarro, who's uh, someone that I used to work with a, uh, a while ago, but his daughter is right here. She's outstanding. I think she's number one in the country, right? You want to you What's your name? Chantel Navarro. How old are you? I'm 15. 15? How long have you been boxing now? For three years. Who do you look up to? Look up to my uncles and my cousin, Steven. Oh, come over here. What's your name, Steven? Uh, Steven Navarro. How old are you? Um, 15 years old, ma'am. Oh, both of you, are you guys No, ma'am. So you guys are both amateurs. How, why did you guys choose boxing? I chose boxing to carry the legacy of my family, and also I was inspired by my uncles to do this. Yeah, the legacy of the um, Navarro boxing has brought us a long way. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, surpass our uncles and fulfill what they couldn't do. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring this up. Don't forget us, you won't. So you guys are top amateurs, am I right? What do you guys like to do? Do you like to do knockouts? What do you, what's your specialty? My specialty is technique and skill. Um, I go fight lefty, righty. Um, I'm a smart fighter, as they, they've told me. And yeah, we're both ranked number one in the United States. Both fought the USA team. Oh, we're gonna These, this is the future right here. Give it up for them. They're ranked number one. Do you guys see yourself on the stage soon? Tom? We can promote them. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I just spoke to Nacho. We're going to have a couple of amateur fights on the next show. So give it up for the number one ranked amateurs in the country. These are the future Olympians. These are the future champions. Get to know their names. Watch their fights, because we're going to see them soon in the ring on the Hollywood Fight Night stage. Okay, now we have all these people behind us. Let's go. All right. Where do you want, where do you want to start? We have Mario Ramos. He, he was did. supposed to fight tonight. He had gotten cut in his last fight, so we're going to see him back in the ring pretty soon. But he had a great performance uh, last time out here. And Mario always puts on a great fight. Put on the fight of the night at the last Hollywood fight night. I remember that fight. You, that was, I remember talking to you about it. You were looking for that knockout. Unfortunately, you got cut, so you couldn't fight. How is, the, how is it healing? It's getting better. It's um, just training, staying ready for whatever. How is fight nights right now? Since you're now in the audience and you, you have to assess everything, how everything is going. There was two knockouts. It was exciting, exciting. yeah. Did you think it was going to go like that, or did you think it was going to go a little longer for those fighters? I felt like it was going to go a little longer. For, yeah. But... Boom, just, yeah. <laughs> well, good. We can't wait to see you back in the ring. Heal nicely and um, get back to uh, get back to us over here. Okay. You know what? Let's step up. Next. Alem. So to, I'll introduce him and then you yeah, can do you the. Yeah, go for it. So this is Alan Becic from Germany. He was. 
Oh, you're cutting out. <laughs> See, he brought a lot of fans with him. He was supposed to fight tonight. WBO Intercontinental title fight. His opponent here. Okay, I'll right. just My mic is going. <laughs> um, his opponent was here, did the media training, looked in great shape, had some issue with his manager in Germany, actually flew back before the weigh-in, unfortunately. So Alam is here. He was supposed to be in the ring tonight, but please give him a big round of applause. Alam is 22-0, and 0, and uh, he will be fighting for the Intercontinental in his, uh, in his next fight. He's 22 and 0 by way of 19 knockouts. Let's get that. Let's get that in there because those are a lot of knockouts. Um, I know I spoke with you yesterday after the weigh-in. I know you're disappointed. We're all disappointed. What will be next for you since that opponent has fallen out? No, I have. I'm in shape. I will be in shape. I will be in training. I have to be in training, and I look forward uh, for the uh, next step for another the the another uh, opponent have to pay has to pay for the, uh, yeah, what happened yesterday, unfortunately, and I'm looking forward uh, and I'm more motivated for the next fight. You, this is your second time at Hollywood Fight Nights and this is the night that you were supposed to debut here in America on this stage. For you as a fight fan now, how, is, how are the fights been so far? It was a great, uh, the fight was great and my respect to every fighter here who gives a great show for everybody of us and I'm impressed really. It's uh, amazing, amazing how the guys uh, box and they give all of, of their hurt and they fight with, with passion. You can feel it and there's fire everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, I That's what we need, what we want to see. Well, Alem, we, we want to do, we want to see you in the ring. We, we hope that you would be able to make your US debut here again at Hollywood Fight Nights. Maybe it could be the vacant WBO Intercontinental Super Middleweight belt. I have to say it all. But if not, good luck to you, best of luck to you wherever you fight, and we will definitely see you here in LA, though. Definitely, and I'm looking forward, and thank you for everybody. Thank you. Do you guys give it up for him? He was supposed to be the main, or the fourth fight tonight, but we'll see you. The next gentleman, I feel like it's like a little contest. If you guys don't know him, you better get to know him. He's only trained the likes of uh, Vladimir Klitschko, Cecilia Brekus, who are undisputed. Jonathan Banks, don't be shy over there. He is now training Gennady Golovkin. He is the new trainer in his corner, former fighter. What? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you, are you a little shy? Me? No, not at all. Not at all. How does it feel to be the, to watching Hollywood Fight Nights? You just saw the two number one little, the, excuse me, the amateurs at this age. Do you remember it to be this age, fighting at this age? Um, how do you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a fan of the amateurs first before anything else. Um, I have my own amateur program back in Detroit, helping kids off the street. Hopefully that um, they can reach the status you guys have reached, because I think it's awesome and amazing. And I think the beauty of boxing always starts at the beginning, which is the amateurs. And if you could take an amateur fighter and put him in the gym and teach him a skill, the skill set it takes to be an amateur champion or a professional champion, you could take in any Fortune 500 company and run it. That's what I believe. That's why boxing to me, is, I have such a love for it and such a passion for it. And I think it's an awesome sport. Well, the love and the passion of where it's taking you is now taking you into the ring, into the corner of Triple G. And he will be fighting June 8th. He's coming back to the, coming back to the ring. How is training going? Because a lot of people have been asking, how is the new transition being in his corner and uh, teaching him new, something new? Um, first of all, it's been great. Um, the transition for me is kind of easy. And um, I think it's awesome. When you got a, when you got a individual, any type of athlete to me that's, um, that loves what he do and is motivated to do it, then that makes the job a little bit easier to go ahead and start doing things, whether it's different or whether it's something old, but they haven't done it in a long time. Everyone is very excited, every, including me. We're gonna, we're gonna find out what kind of style that you have implemented into Gennady's uh, already amazing style that he already has. So you guys tune in, Jonathan Banks, if not, go watch his fights. You know what, he's from Philly. You're gonna bring that Philly grit. Oh my God, why do I, see, I can sing Philly. 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 <laughs> I can sing Philly. 
I got nothing Be against Detroit, I got nothing against anybody from Philly, <laughs> but I'm born and raised Detroit. Thank you. Detroit. Sorry about that. From Detroit. <laughs> He's like, take that mic down. You just gotta look at his hat, Cynthia. <laughs> so that's that's Jonathan Banks. Again, Triple G, Madison Square Garden, June 8th on the zone. We have Max Golovkin, Triple G's twin brother, is in the house. He's uh, kind of the secret weapon behind Triple G. And also, Jonathan Banks trains Ali Akhmedov, the next fighter we want to introduce. Ali is... Big, big hand of applause for Ali Akhmedov. <laughs> See, I got two mics now. <laughs> so Ali is fighting uh, on the Triple... He's the featured uh, fighter on the undercard. He's undefeated, 14-0 with 10 knockouts. He also fights 168 pounds, and um, he's training with Jonathan Banks. So we want to introduce Ali. Cynthia, if you want to say a few words with Ali Akhmedov. Ali Akhmedov, you were just here. The Hollywood Fight Nights, the last series in the sixth installment. You're here again, but now you have made the big stage in New York City, your dream, the mecca of boxing on Gennady's undercard. Talk about that moment when you found out you were going to be featured. Мне очень приятно находиться сегодня здесь. Это великолепное шоу и хорошие бои сегодня смотрим. Всем участникам, всем ребятам желаю дальнейших больших побед, больших вершин. First of all, I'd like to say that this is a really, it's a pleasure to be here. The fights are just wonderful, and I'd like to wish good luck to all the fighters. How do you, th do you know who you're fighting uh, June 8th on Gennady's card? Right now we're working on the opponent. And how does it feel that you are in a new training camp? with Jonathan Banks and Gennady Golovkin. Are you learning a lot of different things, a lot, a lot of different techniques, new styles that fits your, t uh, your training? Мы много работаем, каждый день это тяжелый труд, и есть куда работать, есть чему учиться, и все, что требуется, это только работать, 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 то, что мы делаем. Я очень счастлив, где я нахожусь. Я очень доволен, что нахожусь с теми людьми, you know, we, we work a lot. This is a hard labor every day. You know, there is a lot of uh, room for me to grow. But I'd just like to say that I'm very happy where I am right now. And this is a truly happy moment for me. Best of luck to you, June 8th, making your, you're making your debut in the Mecca of Boxing in New York City. And good luck to you. All right. Well, is, is Lulu here? Bang Bang, are you here? I think she was here with She Elvis. was here, and Raquel Miller was here, who just recently won last night. Oh, I wanted to interview them, but okay, well, I'm gonna, so you guys can pan out. Jonathan Banks is probably saying, I am not from Philly. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I kept thinking Philly. <laughs> you guys, this is uh, future champions right there. Future champions right here, and are the man of the hour. Jonathan Banks. Okay, we're gonna get this show going. I think it's time for Crazy Ray. We're gonna get Crazy Ray in the ring. He is our official sponsor, one of our official sponsors, Ocean Honda, North Hollywood, Ventura, and the San Juan Capistrano. Yeah, he gives the best deals. Where is Crazy Ray? Where are you at? There you are. Okay, I will give you the mic because I know you love to take the mic. <laughs> you guys give it up for Crazy Ray. In the house. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming here. Thank you for 360 promotions, Tom. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ray. Thank you for everyone here. A courtesy of Victory Automotive Group, which is family-owned operator, want to thank you to have these winners here. These boxers are amazing boxers. Two knockouts already. 
Okay, two knockouts already! Yo! Okay, the best part about it, we're so proud to be the sponsor, the sponsor of 360 Promotions. We're lucky. Family owned and operator. We treat you like friends and family. Where are you gonna go to buy a Honda? Ocean Honda of Ventura. See Chris Toothman right there, or Crazy Ray, the deal maker. Yes! Let's go, okay? Okay? Easy to buy a car back, credit card credit, it doesn't matter. Low payments all the time, we win! That's why you're the winner, we're the winners as well. So I'm gonna tell everyone thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to see these amazing athletes. They're winners as well, okay? And I'll tell you one thing, we treat everyone like friends and family at Ocean Honda of North Hollywood, Crazy Ray, the deal maker, Ocean Honda Ventura, Chris Toothman, give us a call. Thousand dollars more for your trade-in. Right now, see one of our happy, beautiful girls. Look at this, Ocean Honda wins. So I want to tell you guys one last thing. Enjoy the last bout, because guess what? We're here to see more next time. Okay, give us a call. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's see another knockout. <laughs> well, we also do have some goodies from Ocean Honda. The, the lovely ladies will be throwing out some keychains. Heads up, guys. Things are going to be flying. Sky does it. Crazy Ray, thank you so much for being a part of our show. We also want to thank our official sponsors that got the official beer of boxing, MGM Resort. <laughs> yeah. That was that was a long little interlude there. Alin Bezek was supposed to fight tonight, and that was going to be a WBO Intercontinental title bout, a 10-round bout on a club show. That would have been very special, but hey, we'll see Alin Bezek maybe in the next show. It's great to see Jonathan Banks. I always love to hear him talk. He's such a, yes. such a mellow dude. I was getting an Isaac Hayes flashback staring at his face with the shades on and the yeah. beard and everything but the man knows his boxing he's calm he learned from the best yeah. the late great Emmanuel so it and like he's he was telling those two young amateurs you know he's a big believer in the amateur program and, and I like trainers like that that yeah. have a background obviously he has the boxing background himself a former fighter he was a former amateur and a former professional yeah. at the world-class level so he's been there he's done that he knows what the fighter goes through. He knows what it takes to get a fighter physically and mentally ready. So it'll be really interesting to see what Gennady Golovkin looks like under the tutelage and with Jonathan Banks in the corner on June 8th at Madison Square Garden against Steve Rolls. You know, those two kids, those two 15-year-olds, yeah. their father used to train me <laughs> That's great. years ago. When, you know, when he was still a teenager. I'm talking like, you know, 1993, 94, maybe 95. His name is Nacho Navarro. And his brother was Jose Navarro, who was a 2000 U.S. Olympian yeah. and should have been a world champion at junior bantamweight, yeah. traveled to Japan and, and, and had some, some fights with True. some excellent, excellent Japanese champions. One of them he should have won, definitely. Uh, and uh, his other brother, Carlos, was also wasn't a U.S. Olympian, but he was a he was a uh, an amateur standout. Actually, fought and beat Floyd Mayweather in the Carlos. amateurs. You know he, Carlos, yeah. Carlos was managed was by Tom. He was a left hander. That's right. Tom. That's also, right. Carlos Navarro is a electrician. Yeah. And he lives in Vegas. Oh, he's in Vegas now. The okay. Navarro family lives in Vegas. Okay. The whole family, all the brothers. Even even Nacho? I think Nacho lives in Vegas. Oh, also. I thought Nacho was still out here. Um, that's he could be. I could be wrong. But it's I, beautiful though seeing his kids. I yeah. didn't know. I knew he had kids who were boxing. I didn't know yeah. that they were ranked number one in the United States. That's amazing. That's. I mean, that's really amazing. Well, Navarro was a southpaw. Yeah. And uh, Tom managed him while he was managing me, and um, he was a really good puncher. Yes, and, he and was. He, and like I said, the one thing about him, if you don't know, he beat Floyd. In the he did. 
He was as an amateur, he was like pound for pound level. Yeah. Like he was pound for pound the best US amateur for a while. I'm talking about mid nineties, yeah. ninety-four, ninety-five. Um, but just because you had a great amateur career doesn't yeah. mean you're going to have a great professional career, and we'll see so what uh, what Nacho Navarro's children do when they're ready to turn pro. But you know what? Coming up is the main event. Oh, look forward to that. Sergei Bolachuk, 13 and 0. 13 KOs. 13 KOs. They call him El Flaco because he's uh, he's the quintessential explosive thin man. Yeah. He's tall. He's skinny. But there's power, man. There's you know, power there. Of who he is perfect, Alexis Alguayo. Man, that's high praise. That's what he reminds <laughs> me of. <laughs> oh my goodness. The tall, thin man. I mean, he's tall, thin. Uh, great leverage. He reminded me a lot of Alguayo when I saw him. Oh my God, that's the highest praise you can give it, an explosive thin man. But Freddie Hernandez, a veteran of 44 bouts. Yes, he's 40 years old. Yeah. He looks in great condition. If you saw the weigh-in yesterday, you yeah. see this veteran is motivated. He's in good condition. And Cynthia Conte spoke with both fighters at the weigh-in. We'll see interviews with both of them. But Freddie Hernandez is not just a veteran of, of fights. He's been in there with world-class the opponents. At the, at the top of the show, I mentioned that he was a welterweight. Very tall for yeah. a welterweight, too. He's 5'11". And his reach yeah. is almost as long as Boa Chucks, which is saying something. But he fought... I'm trying to think of the, the notable welterweight champions that he faced. Andre Berto blew him out in one round. But you know what's amazing? He came back in his very next fight, less than a year later, he faced Luis Colazzo, who's still serviceable. He can still fight. Louis, Louis Colazzo, yeah, former WBA welterweight champ, outworked him over 10 rounds. I saw that fight. It was at Staples Center here in Los Angeles. Uh, and there's a number of champions that he faced uh, who are junior middleweights and middleweights, even right now, such yeah. as... Uh, Demetrius Andrade yeah. and uh, Julian J. Rock Williams. He was in there with those guys. So he's mixed it up with the best. But now we're going to hear from these guys, both Freddie Hernandez and Sarah Boachuk. Cynthia Conte spoke to them yesterday after the weigh-ins. Everyone, well, this is a big tree. We have Freddie Real, the El Real Hernandez, and Freddie Jr. He's going to be translating for us. Freddie, you have a very big fight. You are the main event tomorrow night for Hollywood Fight Nights. You're going up against undefeated fighter Sergei Bohachuk. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I feel ready. I have is the, I know he's the old fighter, but all time is the training hard, very hard. My son is watching all time running, all time training. This is my job because who who are in your job every day every day this is my job well the, your job your resume is pretty impeccable you fought lara andre colazza berto now you're stepping in with a kid he doesn't care he just told me he wants raise your hands up because he's gonna hit you hard what do you have to say to that yeah yeah but this is step by step yeah i i feel in focus for win tomorrow but this respect the other guy but He's the business, yeah. And now, since you have your son, he's going to be watching you. How important is this fight for you to come out victorious tomorrow night? Yeah, uh, he. Uh, all time I teach it, you, you now ready for win, for win. You all time then say, you win, you win, you lose. Oh my God, yeah, I need a win. Yeah. And out of all those fights, you have you have 34, 34 wins by way of 20, 22 knockouts. What has all of that taught you to come to this stage to fight? Yeah, it's the original record, but it's 30, 38 wins, 10 losses. But it's no problem. I, I feel ready. I, let's do it tomorrow. Let's do it. Yeah. Do you have a final message for Seher Bojack before you stepping in the ring? Thank you, everybody, people, for support. This is for my sport, my life. This is my son, my wife in the in the house with my little baby. I have the baby girl. So uh, one week oh, born. One, one, one month ago. Thank you. Thank you have a message in Spanish to all your fans in Mexico City. Uh, gracias a toda la gente que me apoya en México, mis papás y a todos mis amigos. No los voy a defraudar y como siempre saben que peleo, voy a pelear igual. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. Hey everyone, well look who's here. You are back as the main event for 360 Hollywood Fight Nights. You know, the last time, well I just interviewed you and you said you are ready. Well actually you just told Freddie that you get ready, you're going to hit him hard. 
This guy you're fighting against, he's coming to fight. He wants to give you that loss, your first loss. What do you have to say to that? What do you have to say? I can say that I am ready to fight this fight. I will give this guy a good fight. I hope my audience will be happy with this. What can I tell you? You know, I'm I'm ready. I'm gonna give this guy a good fight, and I hope I'm hoping that the fans will be happy. Well, if you guys don't know, get to know him. This is Sergey El Flaco Bohachuk. He is a hard hitter. He is a knockout artist, and you know what? This is the guy. He's gonna say it's easy. All right? Правильно. Это легко. Yes, it's easy. Ну скажи тоже easy. Yes, this is it. <laughs> okay, since you gave him that message in the last interview, do you have a message for Freddy El Real Hernandez that you're going up against? No, I already told him, let him hold his hands higher, I will be strong. As I told him before, he, has, he needs to put his arms up high because I'm going to hit him hard. This man is here to keep his undefeated record. Can't wait to see you guys in the ring. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. All right, so we heard from the fighters yesterday. Kevin, take us through the process. You weigh in, these days you weigh yeah. in, the day before, you weigh in on a Friday, maybe you gotta sweat down, you know, yeah. maybe you're dizzy or whatever when you step on them scales. Gotta do your final interviews. What happens after the weigh in until it's time to step between those ropes? Physically well, and, and mentally, what does a fighter well, go through? psychologically, at that moment, you wanna have all your thoughts together. With me, now, what I mean is, you want to know that you, you can win this thing. Because you went on a scale, you might see something a little bit off on your opponent. Or he might have trouble making weight. So I'm going to make I'm gonna eat food, the right food, some chicken, some fruit, some vegetables. Then I'm going to let that settle in my stomach and get my mind ready for the next day. All right. Well, it's main event time. Joe Martinez will introduce the fighters. Main event tonight, eight rounds, this in the super welterweight division. And ready to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Los Angeles, California. Here is Ariel Freddy Hernandez. All right, there he is, Freddy Hernandez, a veteran of 44 pro bouts, 34 and 10, 22 knockouts. And this guy is coming off two 10-round decision losses. But that was to Wally Omotoso, a former welterweight contender, and Jason Quigley, a hot middleweight prospect from, from Ireland who was also a world-level amateur. And I would say Omotoso and Quigley, probably better athletes than Boachuk. I know Boachuk can crack, but as far as athleticism, those two guys, more natural athleticism. Jason Quigley, definitely bigger than Boa Chuck. Freddy Hernandez hung in tough with these guys. Yeah, you know, when you put an opponent in front of a guy that he has to step his game up, especially a veteran, most of the time they do. And that's what people don't realize, that just because a guy looks a certain way, he can't maybe motivate himself. Even late in my career, you know, it's hard to get up for fights where I'm supposed to win. Right. So I need the negative energy so you think the guy can beat me so I can. When I fought Carlos Formosa, that's what I did. All right, now ready to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner, undefeated, hard-hitting, super welterweight from Ukraine. Here is the undefeated Sergei Bohachu. Ah, wise move. His nickname is El Flaco, and he's walking in to Sounds like some traditional Mexican music. Yeah. <laughs> well, still the Mexican now, audience. Now, all he needs to do is learn Spanish. <laughs> yeah. And if he can get that down, I'll forgive him if he walks into the ring wearing a sombrero like George Navarro did. Well, this is the Triple G tactic. Yeah, hey, if you can Same get the thing. Mexican fan base, hey. more power to you. It's not easy because you got to fight. And guess what? He's that type of fighter. He, he's a technical boxer from Ukraine, had that amateur background. Not extensive like the Klitschko brothers or Lomachenko or Usyk, but he had an amateur background, but he's learned to fight as a pro in Big Bear, California. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Hollywood Avalon here in Hollywood, California, it is time for the main event 
of the evening. Eight rounds of boxing this scheduled in the super welterweight division. Brought to you by Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions and sponsored by Tecate, the official beer of boxing, and of course, Honda Odyssey and Crazy Ray. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer, Andy Foster, and the chairman, John Carvelli. Your three judges appointed, scoring this bout at ringside, Raul Caiz Jr., Jerry Cantu, and Angel Mendez. When the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, veteran and Hall of Famer, Wayne Hedgepan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Hollywood, California, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing multicolored trunks tonight, he weighed in officially 154 pounds even. This veteran of 44 professional bouts holds a record standing at 34 victories. 10 defeats, 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the former world title challenger fighting out of Los Angeles, California. Nacido en Ciudad de México, presentando Ariel, Freddy Hernandez. And across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks trimmed in blue, he weighed in 153 pounds. In 13 professional bouts, he is perfect. 13 victories. All 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting at a Big Bear, California by way of Ukraine. Here's the undefeated, hard-hitting, super welterweight, El Flaco, Sergei Bohachu. All right, you got your instructions in the dressing room? Obey my commands all time, and help all protect yourself all time. Give me a good, clean fight. Touch them up, come back out. You got age, a dramatic age difference. 24 Bo Chuck, 40 Hernandez. Reach advantage is not much. Hernandez got a little half an inch reach advantage. But Bo Chuck does have height. Yeah, just one inch taller, though. Really? Bo Chuck is used to being much taller than his opponents. Now he's in there with a grizzled veteran who can look him right in the eye. Yeah, Bo Chuck can move up about two divisions uh, eventually. I uh, remember you told me that our last broadcast, and I'm, I'm just looking at him. He just looks looks too flacco. He yeah. looks too thin, yeah. man. But, he, but, but remember one thing about thin yeah. guys. Thin guys have height. They can add weight on. Okay? That's true. Listen, Tommy Hearns was very thin well, and skinny. Freddie Hernandez was a welterweight. And he looks very, he looks well put together at 154 pounds, the junior middleweight division. Um, and he's fought as heavy as middleweight and acquitted himself well. And Hernandez was skinny like Boachuk was yeah. 10 you years ago. Yeah, Timmy Austin, Milt McCorry. Right. Um, you have a lot of guys that have, have height. So with height, you can put on a reach advantage. Because the problem with boxing sometimes is when you're 5'6 you're or 5'7, you're not big enough to move up in weight. Okay? Remember David Tua? Yeah. <laughs> he pulled a heavyweight. Well, he was a heavyweight, he so was he didn't a have small to worry guy. about going I think he was an inch bigger than me. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? I mean, but his, but his legs were huge. His body yeah. was huge. But he was too small to fight with, with with Lennox Lewis and all these other guys. Oh, that's true. He was just too small. Yeah. Man, his punches look like they slow motion, the way he's throwing his shots a little bit. They look a little slow. It's gonna. It takes him a while to warm up. That's not good if you're fighting a guy. Well, right, like a guy Bochuk. who's used to knocking dudes out in the first three rounds. And he should warm up in the dressing room and then come out here sweaty. That's now, what. That's what how you important do. is that? Very important. It's the most important thing. I tell people it's like having a car. If you have your car, you don't get in your car and just stand on the gas. You warm it up properly, right? So you gotta go. And Especially if it's an older car. Yeah. Even newer car, you blow the engine quick right. like that too. Um, Bochuk. You know, is advancing right now. He's going forward. He's throwing a lot of punches. And Hernandez is trying to warm up. Not a good idea. Well, Bochuk's not putting hard pressure on him, though. Not not, not like we've seen against lesser opponents. So he, there's some respect there for the veteran coming from the Ukrainian. Well, Bochuk's trying oh, to... Although that, that that's right punch. cross, yeah, that I, didn't have a whole lot of respect on it. He's been trying to set that punch up and there's another. the whole fight. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to throw a double jab and throw that right hand. There go the jab. 
And I expect the right hand to come right after that. He'll do another jab, and then he's going to try to drop that right hand again. Two things I want to note, and that is Hernandez does tend to cut. There go the right hand again. He's, he's got some brittle, aged skin. And Bochuk has never fought past five rounds. So this fight will get interesting. If it passes five rounds, it'll be interesting to see how Bochuk acquits himself in rounds six, seven, and eight. If we get there. All right, Kevin, who'd you score the opening round for? Bochuk. Uh, he was more active, pressing the action. Hernandez was, like you said, trying to warm up, and that didn't do him any good in that round. Um, I gave it 10-9, Bochuk. Yeah, I didn't see anything land from Hernandez of note. I mean, he threw a few punches, but yeah, he, he's just getting a feel. Getting a feel for the ring, getting getting warmed up, well, and also assessing Boachuk's style. This is how boxing works, guys. The first round is you try to look at your opponent and see what he knows or what has he got, right? And the second round, now my corners told me what I need to do. So now we start implementing the plan. Now, if Hernandez got to warm up, okay, he's going to be behind the eight ball. So you got to remember, it's a 10-9 round. He's down one point. If he loses the second round warming up, then he's going to be two points behind. So... Play catch up. Round two. Junior middleweights. Both men weighed in at 154 pounds. Both guys look good at the weigh in. And I can tell Boachuk has put some weight on, as has Hernandez. Both guys definitely over the junior middleweight division. I would say, this is just eyeball test. I would say both guys are, are over 160 pounds. Well, Boachuk is doing the same thing they did last round. He's utilizing the jab and he's trying to land an overhand right. And, and I tell you, it's, it's simple, but Hernandez has got to be alert and aware and stop stepping to his left. See, he's stepping into the right hand. When right. he steps left, he steps right to the right hand. Now you, would, you would have Hernandez move to his right. Exactly. Well, away from the right hand. Because watch, here it come again. Oh, you called it! Right. Wow! Right when you said that. I'm not a genius. <laughs> just, just oh, boxing. you just know boxing. I, I think you're a genius. That's it. Oh my goodness. Sorry I get so excited when I see a knockdown. I can't help you, it. That's I hope me. you would. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I scare the sound people. Right? <laughs> a little bit. So yeah. Hernandez needs to step to his right, not to his left. And, he, and Boachuk is using that jab to make him do it. Hey, let me ask you this, Kevin. Yeah. Is, is, does Boachuk have an awkward rhythm or style to him? Yes, he does. It's, it's, it's like he's trying to learn the American style. <laughs> And it's, it's weird, but let me tell you oh, something. Oh, that's American. That's, that's yeah. actually Mexican style. Yeah, that that left hook. Yeah, that left hook that, to the body. That awkwardness that he has is helpful for him because he comes everything off the jab. You watch. He's very hard to hit. He has very good head movement, as you can see, and he's very hard to hit. So the big thing with, with Boa Chuck is Hernandez right now, the mistake that he's making, here it goes again. He's going to force that. He's going to force him to that. He's trying to force that right hand. He's trying to force him to the right hand. You know, you're right about Hernandez's punches. They they do look really slow. Yeah, it looks like he's fighting a slow motion. Yeah, or underwater. Yeah. And he's, it's like he's pushing. He's doing like a push tactic. He goes close and he pushes forward Chuck. See, like right there. He's not really landing solid, solid, solid shots. Yeah, he is trying to move his hands a little bit, and Boa Chuck is looking to counter him with both. Both power hands, because Boachuk's got just as much power in his left hook as he does with his right cross. Well, what I would tell Boachuk is you right throw left hook, at least it to the right hand. So I'm saying, if you throw the right hook, right, the left hook, the left he, hook and he then drives him to the right hand. Follow through round. I like that jab to Hernandez's belly that Boachuk is firing. Oh, it's very good. Very, it, it, it distracts him. So Boachuk, sometimes to get a knockout, you got to act like you're not trying to knock the guy out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can't alert him. It's like, it's like, tell him, I'm trying to knock you out. So now what Bochuk's doing, going, going backwards, allowing Hernandez to go forward, it's like, I'm not trying to knock you out. Everything's safe. <laughs> well, you know, one of Sergey's uh, biggest biggest things about Hernandez is that he gets... Don't just dream it. Drive it during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. Going on now at Ocean Honda. Drive home a brand new Honda Accord for only $179 per month. So hurry in and save big during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event at Ocean Honda. Here we take a look at the, the knockdown. As you can see right here, 
He throws that straight jab and that right hand right down the pipe, and that's what he's been trying to do all day. Yeah. And see what the jab. Well, Hernandez threw a right hand and stepped forward, and he was squared up. His feet were parallel when he ate that right yeah. hand from Bolchuk. Also, he stepped to his left where he stepped into the right hand. As you pointed out, and I, I mean, you called it, that punch. You said he's going to run into the right hand, and right on cue, Bolchuk yeah. let it go. Everything is strategy in boxing, strategically placed. All I need is my opponent to be in the wrong place at the right time. <laughs> That's why I need your cooperation. So if fighters could talk, I would need you to cooperate. Round two of a scheduled eight rounder. This is the main event of the seventh installment of Hollywood Fight Nights. Oh, Chuck, that jab he's got is lethal. He throws downstairs and upstairs. And I tell you, this is cooperation. Hernandez is cooperating with Bochuk. Okay, by giving him what he needs to be done. What Bohochuk is learning is to be more patient, a little bit more technical. Yes. And be smarter with what he's doing. Because I know he's always just going for the knockout, but he needs to be patient because this is a very tough test for him, for Bohochuk. I a see, veteran like this. I see the poise. He's a different fighter you see, he's from when rushing. I first saw yeah. him. I first saw him fight probably under a, a Gennady Golovkin card because both are or at the time, Golovkin was trained by Abel yes. Sanchez, and, and Boachuk is still trained by Abel Sanchez, who's in the corner in this fight. Um, I saw uh, like a, a, a volume puncher, a pressure fighter volume puncher. People were calling him the Ukrainian Antonio Margarito. And that's exactly what he looked like two years ago, but he has changed. He's changed a lot, and right now he's, he's calm, he's more patient. I like his body punches. Um, he's got a very good jab. Hernandez is not putting the pressure I thought that he would put because, you know, you got them old legs. You know what I'm saying? They're 40, yeah. You're 40 years old, and you need to be going forward, not backwards. That wears his legs totally out. But he did tell me, even though people say I'm old and I, might, I may not have legs, he has experience. And what makes him a Mexican-style boxer, he said to me, he has heart and two balls. So that's, what brings, that's what's going to bring him into this fight against Bohachak. Yeah, if those had gloves on them and they could punch, <laughs> <laughs> that would help him. That's a, that's a good point. I'll tell you what, Bohachak yeah. is zeroing in with uh, right crosses and with that'd left That would be hooks. helpful. That's a good line. I'm going to have to use that. Does, does it have gloves? He can say what he want, right? Right, yeah. They don't throw no punches. <laughs> <laughs> they can get hit, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they can. Bowichuk is zeroing in with the right cross. He's landing it, and he's looking to set it up with other power punches when he's in close, mainly that left uppercut. Yeah, like right now. Oh, like look, at the, look at the face of Hernandez. It's oh, already yeah, it's worse for yet. wear. Yeah, it's, it's looking it, raw. Yeah, we don't I don't know if around. he's spilling blood yet, but it's probably coming. Yeah, Bowichuk's consistency is causing that swelling, number one. And let me tell you something. He's trying to drive him into that right hand. There it goes again. His goal is to land that right hand. So he's doing everything in his power, keeping that jab going, and making him step to his left, Hernandez, and they're going to throw that right hand. Hernandez is trying to provide some professional resistance, but it's taking quite a toll on his face. Well, he's rushing it with his head. That's what Hernandez is doing now. Bowichuk is loving it. Yeah. This is his fifth time on Hollywood Fight Nights. He made his debut. This is the second time he's the main event. And he sure loves it. I mean, he always says it's easy. Every interview I say, you know, how was he? He's like, it's, it's just easy. I think what he means is I put the work in. Uh, yeah, in Big I put Bear. the work I in. I work yeah. hard so the fights are easy. It's easy. You know, what, you, what, you know what I also do? Is he's also a chef. He cooks for Murat and Guido, like all the heavyweights, because they said, if he doesn't cook, we won't eat. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? I'm sure he knows what to eat himself, particularly after a weigh-in. Yeah? Yeah, because he's, yeah. he, he's smart about it. He, has, he hasn't put on too much weight after the weigh-in, but That's he's definitely put on is, some weight. The key after the weigh-in, Five, maybe six, seven pounds. Nothing, yeah. not too heavy. Of course, it slows you down. Of course. Don't eat meat, certain meats. You have chicken. If you want to have a light, go fish, go light. You know, you want to be light in your stomach. You want your stomach digesting food. It slows you down. True. Round three of a scheduled eight. Thank you for everybody who's joining us yeah. around the world. We also have Boss Sorry, Nation. Did yeah. I just say round <laughs> I'm at <the> round four. <laughs> it's all right. It's like me it's saying zipping. Philly. I said Philly <laughs> for it's Jonathan by. Banks. That's Wait, all right. We're already at the halfway point. Yeah. Flacco's looking good, but 
Well, as I was saying, thank you to everybody who's vo uh, joining us. Fight oh. fans from around the world. Fox Dio. Nation is tuned in. This right, so that's the UK. British fans. They're up. What it, What time is it? It's already. It's eight hours ahead, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, they, they're watching, trust me. Oh, I know. They stay up for boxing. And if you guys uh, also kind of shout out, tomorrow Tomorrow is Doug Fisher's birthday. Oh, oh. stop, ah. Cynthia. Come on. Oh. He's going to be 21 I'm, again. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'm, I'm as old as Freddie. <laughs> me and Freddie. Forty, fabulous at 40. Fabulous at 40. <laughs> Yeah, Freddie looks like he's punching in slow motion at me. Um, his punches are very lethargic. It's like they're in slow motion. They have no real, yeah, he's, he's real trying, snap on them. He's trying to put them together. The heart is still there. He's still willing. It's just yeah. that the body doesn't respond. He's not getting his feet behind it. So if you look at his feet, Hernandez is not getting a twist motion. It's almost like the dance to twist. Yeah. So when you throw punches, you use your whole centrifugal force to he's, punch. He's right. just lifting. So yeah. He's, so not, he's not pivoting on those, that back foot. Yeah. Yeah. Those are arm punches that he's throwing. You're yeah, exactly So there's right. no power behind there's that. None. You need the leg. But he's getting hit with Boachuk with the arm punch. There's a lot, lot of leverage. Uppercut, yeah. A lot of leverage behind Boachuk's punches. Yeah. He's got leverage and everything. Look at that. I mean, and then he's got to figure out a way to keep him off. He's got to throw something hard and twist his body to make Boachuk keep advancing. Because right now... Going backwards is much harder than going forward. Yeah, and Hernandez, it fatigues you. Hernandez doesn't seem comfortable pressing forward. He's not the kind of guy to hold. He's not the kind of guy to grapple. And and so that type of fighter is, is the type of fighter that gets knocked out by a fighter like Boachuk. Yeah, Boachuk's going to the body and the head. And that, that's good strategy and good technique. These are some fearsome exchanges. Freddie Hernandez definitely getting the worst of them. Yeah, you know, his corner's going to have to look at him. Real close to he's taking some real big shots. You know, and we still got a little bit to go. We got another we halfway mark, so those shots are taking a toll. Fierce action, and hats off to the old man for hanging in there. Yeah, give him credit. He's hanging in there. It looks like he's gonna see the end of the fourth round. Well, it's still 20 seconds. That's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> especially when you're in, yeah, especially when you're, you're in with Polichuk. <laughs> when you're getting hit, forget it. He is just throwing with bad intentions to Hernandez's face. Yeah, Boachuk has definitely Ooh. stepped up the nice, intensity nice and, the, and the, the pace. pace. He's got to watch for a headbutt yeah. and a cut. That's the major thing they got to watch for here. The headbutt and a cut. You don't want that. Let's see if uh, Hernandez is... Don't just dream it, drive it during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event going on now at Ocean Honda. Right now, our deals are so good, you may think you were dreaming. Like a brand new Honda Accord for only $179 per month or a brand new Civic for just $125 per month. And when you upgrade at Ocean Honda, we'll give you 125% of the book value for your trade. So hurry in and save big during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event at Ocean Honda. All right, let's see what kind of work Hernandez's corner is doing on his face. And I'm wondering if they're having second thoughts about sending him out here for the fifth round. You see who's in his corner? Ponce de Leon. Yeah, and he was he a warrior. Out, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's great to have a former fighter in your corner sometimes. Yeah. Oh, uh, not so much. It depends if you have a similar style a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Because he could tell you the wrong thing. Well, I mean, sometimes fighter turned trainers, they still have that fighter's pride and they don't want to they don't want to throw in the towel when they should throw no. in the towel. I mean, we've seen that happen. He just has Hernandez has a new month or a one month old daughter back at home. Just had a baby girl. And no wonder he's still fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so and he's still son, having kids. His son is and a here. Girl. A girl too. I yeah. asked, I go, what do you think if um, your daughter wants to fight? He's like, no, we don't need two bad fighters in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> yeah, I got a daughter that's actually boxing. She might turn pro. Um, she might fight for Roy Jones. Oh, that's awesome. My, my daughter, Amber Kelly. And, um, How old is she? She's actually 28. Okay. Right. I'll have to keep so we'll, we'll be 28 in June, exactly. So, so uh, if she wants to box, I'll let her do it, you know. I give her some information. 
Bowichuk only 24, 13 and 0. Looks like he's on his way to notching not only his 14th victory, but his 14th stoppage. Oh, nice uppercut that Bowichuk just landed. He got through his guard. Yeah. Those body, oh, yeah. oh that, yeah. did that hit his Those body shots, Those, and he yeah. caught me in the middle of my sense on some body shots. Oh, really taking yeah, chopping we, up. We were getting pelted by the sweat from those body shots. I cannot believe Freddie Hernandez made it to his feet. Up. Oh, oh, and they Wayne Hedgepath has seen enough. He's looking at his body language. Wayne is looking at, into the eyes of the fighter. And, and, and look, Hernandez is walking around not on He's steady legs. Yeah. yeah he, I think Boachuk took his legs those with body that body attack. Oh, uh, he took his legs a couple rounds ago, but Freddie, I, Freddie just kept yeah, going. At, at, at his age right now, those body shots at 40 years old, body shots, you got to block those. You know, as we look here, you take a look. Boa Chuck is working the uppercuts inside. The, you know, the body shot, they got a nice little right to the body and left to the body. I mean, amazing left hook right underneath the rib cage. Look Watch at this. that. Watch this. It's going to be a right uppercut, and then from the other side, the left uppercut, then a right, right body there shot, go, and right then the there. other side, a left to left the body. Left uppercut, right, right, it's right perfectly landed. I mean, that was a tremendous shot. And at, and at 40 years old, you know, the shot is even worse. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder if Hernandez could have taken that fight at 30 years old. No. Taking those punches. Yeah. Boachuk, there was a point, you know, Boachuk sort of took his time, even though he was putting some, some pressure and some punishment on Hernandez in the opening two rounds. Really, after the third round, particularly in round four, Boachuk stepped up the pressure, the intensity, and the volume with the same power, and that you know that was the beginning of the end for Hernandez. Yeah, Bowachuk, what Bowachuk was doing was breaking him down with the body shots. The body shots were tremendous, and that is the way a fighter should fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. One minute, 40 seconds, round number five. Referee Wayne Hedgepath in, steps in and calls his halt to about your winner by KO. Now 14 and 0, 14 straight knockouts. He's still undefeated. El Flaco, Sergei Boachu. So an excellent win for Boachuk. Probably the best win of his career so far. It's the first time he's faced a guy who's been to the big dance. Fought world champions, fought for a world title, and been in there with, with all the best fighters over the past 10 to 15 years. And he took care of business against Hernandez. And you see not only the, the power and the ferocity, the intensity, but you see the technique and you see the tactics with this fight. So maybe Boachuk is one of these fighters where as his promoter, Tom Loeffler, with 360 Promotions, steps up the level of competition. Boachuk will step up the level of his game. And if that's the case, he will not be a prospect for much longer. Kevin, did I mention that Boachuk is the new faces spotlight fighter in the latest issue of Ring Magazine? I believe that. <laughs> he's worthy, right? Yeah. He is, he's, he's a guy that can do a lot of things. He's got the height to move him in weight, number one. Number two, he's a tremendous puncher, all right? And he's in a middleweight division. So let me tell you something, that's a lot right now. And they need a guy like him to take the place of G, Canelo, and the guys that are coming before them. It's true, it is a very fertile division. And I think Tom is gonna have to search for somebody really good to take this young man the distance. El Real Hernandez, thank you for the performance tonight. I know you came in and you knew this was going to be a tough fight. You were the toughest opponent for Bohachuk. Talk about what it was like to share the ring with him. No, es un peleador joven, fuerte. Me sorprendió, me me tiró, me conectó. Es fuerte. Sabíamos a lo que veníamos. No pude hacer mi trabajo. Sentí que le conecté uno que otro golpe, pero Lo importante era ganar. Freddie says that he, you know, he's a strong young fighter and that you know, he, he landed some good shots. You know, Freddie also, he landed some good shots on him, but you know, he's younger than him and you know, he has a strong right. So. He was attacking the body. We, we saw that he was attacking your face. The power that he kept, that, that you knew of, how do you rate that power of Bohachuk? 
está pagando abajo y arriba y del, del poder que él tiene, ¿qué, qué, 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 lo, qué, qué le califica en arriba? O? No, eh, las dos formas, te castiga bien el cuerpo, te castiga la cara. Me confundió un poco con la cara y me conectó ahí en el cuerpo y pues se acabó la pelea. Well, he has, uh, he hits in the bottom and top pretty hard, so he has strong punches the lower and upper body. Um, you know, he, you know, he connected him, so, you know, he did feel his power, so he's a strong fighter. So it, it's, it's, it's both, you know, it's, it's strong up and bottom, so he's... Well, you came out, you had Bonte de Leon in your corner, and you knew taking this fight, you have a baby girl at home. You did a great job, and I want to thank you. You gave Bojack, I know, he knew. He wanted to hit you hard. He came and did what you did, and you came here, and you told me you wanted Box Intelligent, but you wanted to give a show to your fans. You guys give it up for Freddy El Real Hernandez. Thank you, I say. Thank you, everybody, people, for coming. Thank you for support. This is my last fight. This now is the old fighter. I don't have uh, opportunities. Thank you for everybody. My sister, he's my mom, my little mom, my wife, my son, my coach, Jose Luis Rosa, y una persona muy en especial. My boss, my friend, Tony Delgado, la familia Delgado. Thank you. You guys, give it up for Freddy for his career. You had an amazing journey, and thank you so much for gracing the stage here at Hollywood Fight Nights with us for our main event, for our seventh edition. Bojack, Sergey, El Flaco, come on over. I think this is the most blood I've seen all over your shorts. It's not my blood. I know it's not your blood. We're gonna go back to what we talked about. This was your toughest test in the ring as to date. You stopped him. You were going to the head, you were going to the body. You did exactly what you did. Was that your game plan with Abel going into this fight? Я просто боксировал, делал свою работу. Хочу тебе сказать, ты меня перед боем брал интервью, ты говорила, что возможно бой будет 8 раундов. Я же тебе говорил, что я закончу быстрее. Ты мне не верил. Listen, I was just boxing and doing my job, but I just wanted to tell you something. Last time you took interview from me, you said that the, it's possible that the fight will last for eight rounds, but I told you it's not going to last eight rounds. I know, you're always, I'm always wrong because you didn't. This was, you ended it in the sixth. Can we, it was at the sixth, I believe? Fifth? 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 In the fifth. Oh, see, I'm still wrong. Can we do a replay of this beautiful boxing? You got him, you cut through his guard with the right uppercut. Then to, oh, you want to turn around? Then you got him to the body right. You attacked him and you dropped him. You were slipping through his guard. Was he a tough opponent for you? Yeah, Fred is a very good opponent. Probably in my profi box, it was probably the most difficult opponent in my professional career. He's a very good boxer, a good fight for me, a good practice for me. Thank you very much for this fight. Yes, absolutely. Freddy is a very tough and great boxer. And honestly, I think in my professional career, this was the toughest fight so far. So I'd like to express my gratitude to him. This was a great fight. He did retire in the ring tonight as the main event. And I want to also congratulate you. You did, you, I learned from your trainer that you have become more of a technical boxer because you like to be the aggressor and the pressure fighter. We saw you more patient, more calm, and you respected his power at the beginning, but in the end, you took the fight and you made it bloody and you won. Do you have a message to your fans that have all tuned in all around the world? Oh, you want to I want to say thank to my trainer and my team. Thank you for this Thank you to my promoter, my manager. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to my trainer and to my team. Uh, this, was, this was a great support, and I thank you all. Well, all right. You guys, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, we get to finally raise his hand. You guys, Sergei El Flaco Bohachuk, you are 14 and 0. Congratulations. Is easy? My phone. Oh.
Хочу спасибо сказать всем своим фанатам, кто поддерживает меня, кто приходит на мои бои, болеет за меня. Большое вам всем спасибо. Я буду стараться вам показывать все лучше и лучше свой бокс и улучшаться в профессиональном ринге. I'd like to say thanks to my fans for everyone who comes to see me, to see me fight. I'd like, I will try to be better and better as I go. Lastly, Bojack, was it easy? Mm. Maybe easy. <laughs> no, this is a good fight. Good fight. No, not easy, in good fight. Good for me. Good for me, good experience for me. I am happy this fight. Well, congratulations on your huge win. Congratulations, Abel and Team Summit over there. Congratulations. All right, guys. Well, this was Fight Night. What a fun installment of the seventh installment of Hollywood Fight Nights here at the Avalon. We didn't know it was going to be quick knockouts, but there were some really good fights. We got some bloody fights, which I love, some bloody wars. I am Cynthia Conte. I'm going to throw it back to the boys. And remember, tomorrow night is Doug Fisher's birthday, so make sure you guys tweet at him, text him, and the bar is still open, so please go get some tecate and the music. The DJ will be spinning some tunes. So go on and disco, guys. I'm Cynthia Conte for 360. See you guys at the fights, and back to you, boys. Bye, guys. All right, Kevin, give me your final thoughts on Sergei Bowachuk. Bowachuk could be is the next thing. Really? You know Cal what? A couple fights ago, I remember you watched him at, at watched Carson, him and you were kind of like, horrible. Eh, yeah, you're but all right. <laughs> he could be the next thing. He could be. I'm going to wave it offensively. He's made you a believer. Um, He's a real prospect. I still, We still got to put some more guys on him. That's true. Okay? He's still young yet. 13-0, 13 knockouts. He's in a grooming process. And now 14-0, 14, 0, 14, 14 knockouts. 14-0, 14 um, As you go up the ladder, he goes how he tolerates guys that don't bend so, e so easy as I mean, today, Hernandez, was, this, this fight was pretty much in his head already yeah. that if he didn't do well, he was going to retire. Perhaps he had one foot out of boxing yeah. already. So psychologically, Hernandez wasn't the best Hernandez that he could possibly be anyway. Yeah, well, congratulations yeah. to Hernandez. 40 years old, sure. 45 pro bouts. Yeah. It's not Kevin Kelly level. Yeah, he looked, yeah you he had over 70, but 45 yeah. ain't bad. So congratulations to he him a on a good slower. career. He looked a little lackadaisical. Um, uh, uh, he did some decent work, but a hard fight for Bubba Chuck to say, you know what, where am I? Right. Okay? It wasn't a real good test for him, a real solid test, but I like the way Bubba Chuck put things together. Yes. I like the body punching, the jab. He's got some tools that are very dangerous. So there's something for Abel Sanchez to work exactly. with there. And listen, the, the young man is dedicated to boxing. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, he absolutely loves this. He loves training. He loves making weight. He loves fighting. All the he's, things that he, he says. It, he says it's always easy for him, and I don't think he's being arrogant or anything like uh, that. He's saying is it, it's easy come fight night because he puts the work, work in. And in. I've seen him in the gym. I've seen who he spars with. I see who he trains well, around. Europeans. He trains around top-notch guys. Europeans. One thing I always told people when I went to Europe, Europeans they make up in exercise what they lack in talent. Okay. So what happens is a lot of European fighters. Years ago, even years ago to me, we were always in better shape than American fighters. Because we could cut corners, we got a little bit ability, right? <laughs> so what happens is now you take a European fighter, give an American trainer. Yeah. It's like taking 50 Cent and put him with Dr. Dre. Yeah. You take a West Coast producer, East Coast rapper, <laughs> you got a hit. Hey, you know what? With Abel Sanchez, he's got an American trainer. He's got a Mexican-American trainer. Yes. So he's going to get the best attributes For and both the ways. finer points of American boxing and Mexican yeah. boxing. And we've seen with Gennady Golovkin, that puts butts in the yeah. seats. Yeah. That makes fans out of, of not just the hardcore heads, but the casual fans and the yeah. general sports Well, I guess what observers. it rolls down to. Remember, the red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. The yeah. red coats are here. Yeah, they're here. Now the Europeans pretty much run this sport of the boxing because a lot of champions are overseas now. And I'd say boxing is more global now. So now it's the time where... The world enjoys boxing now compared to just America. Well, we've had a we've had a good show here tonight. We had we saw some young homegrown yes. talent. I'll just go through it. The first fight, Umberto Rubal Rubalcava, and he won by knockout over Daniel Constantino, coming off the first loss of his career. He looked really good, really sharp. Whatever personal demons he might have had coming into there, he exercised them in the ring, which, which is what fighters should do. Yeah. Adrian Corona in the second bat of the night, that was a six-rounder at, yeah. at 130 pounds against Canton Miller. 
you and I, yeah. we thought Canton won that fight. Yeah, we props, did. Uh, props to both young men. It was we a did. good, brisk six-rounder. Nice mesh of styles. We favored the, the stick and move man, the boxer, and Canton Miller. The official judges, two of the three, had it for Adrian Corona. So he improves to 5-0, and oh, and that was a learning experience for him. And then we had El Fantasma, George Navarro. Yeah. The Bantamweight standout who's now dropping down to super flyweight. He's now 5-0-1. What a fighter. He he stopped his opponent in one round. That was yeah. Caesar Sustaita. And he just blasted him out there and just had the aura and the look of a future star. And, of course, the most seasoned prospect of the night was the man in the main event, Sergei Boachek. He's still a prospect, yeah. Kevin, but maybe in a couple fights he will advance to, to true legitimate contender status in uh, the very interesting and very deep 154 pound division. A couple nights ago, yeah. our last show, you said you could see him go up away to 160 pounds, 168 pounds. He, he, you know, we'll see I didn't he believe you. It. I didn't believe you then. Yeah. Now, you know what? I believe you. He's so, got the height advantage and, and he's, the way he's built nice and lean. Like I told you, remind me a little bit of a guail. Yeah. Okay. So that's super high praise, by the and way. He's got, like yeah. I said, he's got a little bit of guail in him. And he, one thing about him, learning from his trainers now, Mexican style, he's a body puncher. Right. Right? And he noticed he noticed that he couldn't get him out there with headshots, so he went to the body. Now that body attack is going to serve him well, whether he stays at junior middleweight or ever goes up in weight. We'll probably see him on the next show, but that's all for tonight. So on behalf of the Flushing Flash, Kevin Kelly, the hostess with the mostest, Cynthia Conte over here, Tom Loeffler and everybody with the promotional side and the production side of 360 Promotions. Good night and thanks for watching. I wanna fight.